This is Comic Geek Speak, episode 1243, Uncle Sal. <laughs> I'm Brian Christman. Uh, I'm Jamie D. I'm Adam Murdo. And I'm Mike Gallagher. And welcome to the show. This episode of Comic Geeks is brought to you by SuperheroStuff.com, where you can go to for all of your superhero stuff. Oh, thank you so very much. We're getting into back-to-school merchandise right now. So they have some back-to-school merchandise on their website. It's new. They have backpacks. Lunch bags. They've got Superman. Of course, the Avengers. Very popular. The Avengers movie lunchbox. Even has some classic ones. They've got a Star Wars lunchbox. And, of course, the Batman and Superman uh, drawstring bags. There's even a Batman back buddy character backpack. It's like a little Batman just... (laughs) <laughs> you wear on your back. So like you've seen about the Yodas on your back? Mm-hmm. Well, this is Batman on your back. Now, is he looking back or is he looking over your shoulder? Uh, he, he's looking straight ahead. So if you put him on your back, he's going to be... Good, because then, then he has your back. He's you're, got your back. You're, 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 you're nobody's going to F with you. Anymore. No, that's right. Nobody's going to no, no, no kick me signs on your back, <laughs> nothing. Batman will wipe him out. It's, Batman's finally good for something that's now. That's right. Finally good for something. <laughs> They have a oh ton God. of Dark Knight Rises t- t- t-shirts with oh, a, yes. a more coming soon next to it. Oh, boy. Yeah, because that's that's also the next big thing for the summer. Well, and also well, Spider-Man as well with the movie coming out. No one cares about Spider-Man. Well, some it's people, all about Batman. Some people do. So anyway, go to SuperheroStuff.com for all of your superhero Super stuff. stuff. All right. You came here to hear Uncle Sal, and by darn it, here's Uncle Sal for you, boys and girls. How are you doing? That's just boom. How are you doing? How are things? Oh, man. It's, I'm just coming off my kids' vacation. Kids get vacations? Oh. Well, yeah. yeah. Some, someday somebody will sit down and explain to me why the fuck a five-year-old needs a vacation. But <laughs> last week was the vacation, and I was, you know, I was the burgermeister. So uh, I got picked to be, you know, what I had to do, and uh, I made the best of it. That's all I could say. I, I survived. Well, that's good. <laughs> what have you guys been doing? Jamie, what's your story? Well, I was born a poor black man. <laughs> yeah. You were born a man? Yes, I was yeah. born a poor black child. Uh, I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm, I'm, I'm actually feeling all right. Cancer is still under control, so just knock wood. Yeah. Every day that, you know, everything goes well and... And that's that's pretty much it. I mean, I just you know. If it wasn't cancer, it would be women. Trust me. <laughs> I would like to have one that of problem. Would, really. One of them would fucking get to you. Believe me. <laughs> you know, it's all fun and games until you know you wake up one morning and you got a pair of tits, a hairy pair of tits, and a big fucking belly, and you, and you, you know you can't eat anything anymore, and your fucking taint hurts, and your ass hurts, and everything is you know. You're like a fucking train wreck. <laughs> you know? You're, you're afraid to look down because it's like the crying game, you know? <laughs> so that's my story. That's my story. I was going to say, is, are, are, we, are we talking of experience here? Or? <laughs> yeah, you wake up one day and you just realize, you know, you, you turn into your Uncle Nazy, you know? <laughs> There's just nothing left anymore, you know? You got a big pair of hairy tits. And you know you you just want to be able to to be able to take a a shit and not have to worry about things. You can't eat what you want anymore. You can't stay up late anymore. Your kids drive you fucking crazy. You know my kids, my kids have officially taken over. It's like it's <laughs> anarchy over here now. You you become just a big jag off. You know you you're following kids around all day and they lead you around and tell you what to do and. You just go when the f- when I never even saw my dad, so I don't. Know, I can't relate it to anything. I didn't see my dad till I was like sixteen. You no, know, and I needed money and get bailed out of jail. You know, 
Now they expect you to wear a fucking papoose and walk around <laughs> like you're, you're Geronimo and, 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 you know, put together fucking wagons. Nothing comes assembled anymore. You know, what the fuck do we buy shit from China for if these Jagoffs can't at least assemble it is what I want to know. They certainly got the manpower. <laughs> yeah, well, they got nothing else to do over there all day. Uh, you get a wagon, it's like 17,000 fucking pieces. I'm like, listen, can't we just buy the one that's, like, assembled already? Well, they don't want to assemble it because of the lead paint. Well, guys like Pants are always there going, oh, no, no, you can't buy that one. That's right. That one. Yeah, but you give the guy a deuce, and he lets you walk out with it. He doesn't give a shit. The fuck else has everybody over there got to do all day? They just go, yeah, take it. I don't care. Go ahead. Fucking $300 for a bike the kid's going to ride twice. <laughs> no? It's quite the racket. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll be serious. That's okay. Guys. Well, I have a question for you. This past weekend, um, you went to this um, VertCon in Chicago. Yeah. And I saw about this, that this, this young man just decided to basically start a convention in Chicago, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, he's this kid, nice kid. Everett is his name. Mm -hmm. And uh, he approached a couple of us locally, Mike Norton and a couple of their local guys here in Chicago, you know, a couple of fucking hillbillies and, <laughs> and whoever else. And he's a nice kid, you know, and I just said, hey, you know what, the kid's into comics, and I thought I would just throw my support his way, and I went, and uh, yeah, it was a small little show, but it was pretty much what I'd expected, nice people, um, you know, and uh, we made the best of it. It was it was hotter than shit. <laughs> I mean, it was, oh, Jesus Christ, it was like, it was like a fucking incubator in there, it was hot as hell, it was like in a church basement. And, you know, when I got out of there, I was like, Jesus Christ, it was like a fucking Gandhi movie in there. So. <laughs> but, again, nice kid. Anybody who's into comics nowadays, you know, you got to you gotta throw your support their way. And uh, he, he asked me about it a while ago, and uh, he made me the guest of honor. Spelled Atomica wrong, but he made me the guest of honor. <laughs> so nice. I'm used to it. The fucking speakeasy used to spell my name wrong in the ads, oh, you know, back at the beginning. But they're fucking Canadian, so you know how that works. Well, you got one of those Italian last names like me that's like 40 letters long, so yeah. You yeah, but Jamie, if you, know, it's, if you don't know, you, you know, can you ask? True. You know, I mean, it's, like not, it's not fucking Department of Motor Vehicles where they just don't give a shit. Or this is in Ellis Island where I'm trying to sneak in the country. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about an ad that's going in Diamond, you know, and they spelled it wrong twice. And so, you know, I should have known. Speak easy, they, they couldn't find their ass with two hands. So I just said, I got to get out of here. <laughs> I, I was going to say, and, and where is speak easy now? Enough said. Well, it, that was how they were then. Yeah. I mean, there, some of those guys are still around, believe it or not. I heard. I haven't seen them. But, you know, from the very beginning, it was one of those deals where it seemed like a good idea. But I kind of, you know how when you, you know, you wake up and your, your dick looks like a baby's foot? It's that kind of thing. <laughs> It, it, it wasn't good. No, it, was, it was. It was. I'm sorry. It was. It was. It right. seemed like a good idea was, at the time. It seemed like a really good idea. You know, it was like you know, a pair of Crocs or something. <laughs> your well, wife buys you, and you're like, oh, hey, and it's got the Bears logo. Thanks. <laughs> you're like, the fuck am I going to do with these? What am I a chef? Where am I going with these things? You know. <laughs> Any guy that wears clogs needs a beating. That's, I'll go on record. I, I worked with a guy once that wore clogs, and I go, you're, you're kidding me, right? You're going to go outside with those fucking things on? Or, or what were those other ones that broads, all those hippie broads would wear? What were those, the, with the Birkenstocks, the one with the, mm. the, those were the other ones that I could never get. You know, it's like fat girls with tattoos. It, it, it never works. <laughs> It just never fucking works, you know. <laughs> Fat broads think that tattoos are going to make them sexy, okay? But now you're just a pig with a tattoo. Before, you were just a pig. <laughs> the hot broad, anything works. You know, like a hot broad can pull off rollerblades. You know, a hot broad <laughs> can pull off a bandana. A hot broad could pull off shitting in her, in her pants, you know, and, it, and no, it wouldn't turn me off, you know. But a fat broad, I used to work with these fat broads, and they'd come to work the next day with, like, a dolphin or something on their tit, and you go, well, what the fuck is that? Well, oh, isn't it sexy? I'm like, no. No, if it covered your face, you know. But, you know, the, the, when you're fatter than me, you don't need a tattoo. It doesn't do you any fucking good. <laughs> oh. I don't, I don't know, guys. I got to, you know. 
But I did a couple shows since I talked to you. When did I talk to you guys? Did we land on the moon since I talked to you? <laughs> I, I believe we were were just orbiting the Earth. Okay. Well, I mean, we've I've seen you since then, but we actually last had you on back in December when you were getting yeah, to go see, to Challengers. Is that, you know, and I see some of the some of the fucking degenerate derelict. I mean, ragtag, lorn green motherfuckers you guys have on that show. <laughs> And I go, look at this shit. <laughs> you got room for all these fucking, any guy that's got an app or or comes, anything related to, you know, guy that builds cabinets or whatever the fuck it is, right? You got him on. Me, you lose my phone number. And, and then Jamie always, when I see him, he's like, I don't know anything about it. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, you know. Well, yeah. Brian, Brian, he's got an excuse. He doesn't like me. Pam, he doesn't clearly doesn't give a shit, you know. And everybody else on the show kind of rolls their eyes. Like, oh, fuck. You know, he's a he's a loud mouth, and you know, who, who gives a shit? And he's going to talk about cocks and balls, and, you know, <laughs> Cincinnati bow ties and shitting out windows. So they don't care. But when I see some of these guys, I go, man, you guys really are like getting the pet lady and 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 you know the guy from the San Diego Zoo to come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you can't fucking call me up, huh? Oh, we we'd love to have you. People ask me, and people ask me, they go, "Well, what did, what did you say to those guys?" So, <laughs> did you did you did you piss them off or something? I go, "How the fuck do I know? I never see him. The only guy I see is pants. He's the only guy I ever see at shows anymore." <laughs> Peter, fuck all he knows. He opened up a he opened up a, a taco stand in, in in New York or in you know in the village where he's fucking tossing salads. Brian, he shows up like Johnny Carson once every six shows, okay? <laughs> Everybody else is like a floating, rotating, and, they, and I can hear you guys sitting around going, you don't want to have Sal on. He's just, he's just, just a jag off. He's going to talk a lot of bullshit, and I don't want to hear it. So. Wow, you, you know us so well. It's, well, it's, it's like you were there. Like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like government cheese. Every once in a while you go, eh, give him some. <laughs> Yeah, you know, what, what, what are you going to do? It's like herpes. Every once in a while, the scab shows up. You play stupid, say it's a cold sore, you know? Give you, give you a shot, send you on your way. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, put a little olive oil on it. It'll go away. Oh. <laughs> okay, so what, what you, you did a couple of shows. How were they? I did I did uh, Emerald with that fucking Greek bastard with what's, what's the guy who thinks he's a musician. What the fuck's his name? Jim Demonakis. Yeah, that's yeah, Greeks. You can't trust any of those fucking <laughs> Greeks. They're over there, you know. Nice show, you know, puts me between Tim Sale and, and Matt Wagner, okay? Tim Sale, don't ever get caught on a lifeboat with Tim Sale. <laughs> nice, nice fucking guy, but doesn't have shit to say about anything. He's like, he's like sitting next to Dustin Hoffman in Rain Man. Doesn't have a fucking word to say about anything. Unless you drop a box of toothpicks, he can tell you how many are there right away. <laughs> Sounds like my kind of guy, actually. Right? Nice guy, you know. And, and Matt Wagner, nice guy, but, you know, he started drawing comic books on Bark. He's been around so long. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Fuck, <laughs> why you know? You know, you know. Um, I did Calgary. Everybody told me not to do Calgary, you know, because it was like a big rodeo and they were going to have cowboy hats, only they ice skate or whatever the fuck it is because it's way up north. So I thought, yeah, what the hell? They invited me. So the Asian guy who runs Calgary, imagine that, there's an Asian guy in, in Canada. I didn't think it happened. But he invites me, and he says, hey, listen, we're going to come up. And I, you know, so I said, sure, why not? Everybody tells me not to go. They go, yeah, it's a small show. And I go, guys, who the fuck am I? What am I? All of a sudden, I'm James Brolin? <laughs> I go. I'm not, you know, I'm not a big shot. They don't, people don't give a fuck about me. So I said, I'll go. Turned out to be a great show. Tremendous. Sold out. They had everybody there. They had a great guest list. You know, now mind you, it was a lot of Canadian hillbillies. You know, I mean, literally the middle of fucking nowhere. You know, like where the rocket ship landed when it came from Krypton. King Calgary. <laughs> yeah, I heard that show was where they had the reunion of the next generation of Star Trek cast. And the doors... Means, not, means nothing. Well, I'll be like, the <laughs> oversold... Means, Somebody told me that, and I was like, oh, that's who the bald guy was I was in the elevator with, <laughs> with the English accent. You know? I was looking for the broad with the big tits, the Greek broad that was fucking the, the, the Klingon guy, you know, the guy with the tire on his head. You know? 
But she looked, she looked like fucking five miles of bad road. That boy. <laughs> that. Let me tell you something. She better have gotten all the dicks out of her system when she was young, because there ain't gonna be many coming her way now. Holy <laughs> shit. She looked like fucking Mark Texier with a wig when I saw her. <laughs> oh, it was, it was not a... a and, and, then, and, then, and then I get stuck next to that Puerto Rican son of a bitch on the airplane. Oh. All right? So they, they tell me, to, oh, South close. You live in Chicago? Oh, yeah, Calgary. Shit, you can walk there. It's so close. <laughs> I'm on the fucking plane for like six hours. All right? I mean, and then there's the time difference, and there's all the, you know. So when I got there, I called home, and I was still home. I was on, I was on the fucking plane so long. So you get to Calgary, and there's like, you know, two fucking guys, two hillbillies, a rodeo guy, and a moose is all that's in Calgary. There's nothing in Calgary. Because I really don't know what they do. You'd have to fuck a tree if you got horny in Calgary. There's nothing in Calgary. So I get on the plane, and it's one of these planes that's got like three seats. Like Buddy Holly was the last guy that used to complain that I got on. <laughs> you know, nothing. So I get on his fucking plane and I pay the extra thirty dollars to get the fat guy seat. You know, they call him, you know, you get six more inches of room, you know, and you can live like Orson Welles. And it's beautiful. It's like, you know. So I pay the forty dollars, I sit the fuck down, I got like three or more inches of room, basically so my pants are loose enough to fart now and not kill me. <laughs> They're ready to shut the door. Who comes walking in, literally like, like Apollo 13? Who the fuck comes walking down the aisle, looks like Shrek, all right? Only sweating and fat and Puerto Rican. But Mark Texier. I go, Jesus Christ, what the fuck did I do in what life to get stuck with this bastard? So the seat next to me is empty, but he goes, Sam! And he sits down. Now, mind you, this guy smells like the bottom of a river when he sits next to you. I'm not kidding. He hasn't wiped his ass since maybe like he went to the prom. You know, and Puerto Ricans don't go to the prom, so he never wiped his ass, this guy. He smell, and then he's got his shirt open like he's fucking Dog the Bounty Hunter. He's got it open down his waist. His fucking tits are hanging out. He's sweating. He's, you know, and I said, Mark, what the fuck? I said, when is the last time you've been introduced to a bar of soap? I mean, really, honest to God. He says, what are you talking about? It's so nice to see you. Yeah, yeah, go on with that bullshit, okay? So he pulls a bag of vodka out of his bag. Pulls this bottle out. I don't know, some brand I never heard of, you know, whatever he stole at the bodega, you know. <laughs> so I said, Mark, what the fuck are you doing, man? There's, this is, you know, you're on the airplane. And I, I should have kept my matcha because I was lucky maybe they'll throw him out. You know, but at this point, he's like Goldfinger, where if the plane was going down, I'd use him to plug up the hole, you know, because he won't get sucked out. He's too fucking fat, you know? He looks like a, a much, much fatter version of, like, Desi Arnaz. Only sweaty. He's got that fucked up hairdo. It looks like two cats fucked on his head. You know, he's got, like, the wispy, you know, kung fu panda fucking, you know, I want to try to grow a beard. Maybe chicks will like me. Pulls out a bottle of vodka. I go, I go, what the, what the fuck's with the bottle of vodka, Mark? He goes, well, I brought it just in case. I wasn't sure they were going to have vodka in Calgary. <laughs> I, I said, Mark, where the fuck are you going, to Mars? They don't have vodka in Calgary? <laughs> you know, there's one thing Canadians do is just drink. That's all they do up there because they're so fucking depressed. What else are they going to do? <laughs> so, and I mean, so then when we leave, I get stuck on a plane with him again. This guy, he didn't change his clothes in four days. <laughs> I swear to God, he had the same clothes on, but he sat next to me, and this guy fucking smelled like Shaka Zulu, like one of those tribes <laughs> that, that was, like, chasing you with a spear. You know, that, I said, Mark, Jesus Christ, man. You know, they got to fucking hold him down and, like, lather him up. And this guy, he's got, like, change between the folds and the fat in his stomach. <laughs> He gets up, he's got the ass juice in the back, but it's meeting the, the, the sweat from his back. So it's just one big continuous ass stain he leaves on the seat. So I said, I said Mark, you know, you know the airline's going to charge you for the seat, right? Because nobody can ever sit in that fucking thing again. Because it's, you know, it's like conquest of Planet of the Apes at this point. There's nobody ever going to sit in that fucking chair again. Oh. 
so we get, and then we of course you know it, it never it's never enough. I got to get stuck on the shuttle with him, and you got to listen to his bullshit. And then he you know he walks around, and Mark's a sweet enough guy, but Jesus Christ, it's like if there's the thinning of the herd, he's the gazelle with the broken leg. <laughs> Start with that fucking guy. You know, if they're shooting like darts, just get behind him. He'll be the first one to go. Believe me. If there's racial cleansing going on, don't hang around Mark, because you might get you might get taken out just to be taken out. <laughs> Great painter, but whew, Jesus Christ. Uh, so I guess you didn't. Uh... See any more of the next great show? Great show. Okay. Ray, anybody that tells you Calgary, fantastic show. Great fans, lined up, sold out. Every, I mean, the full, you know, the full McGill. Same with Emerald Con. Sold out. Great people. I mean, the only thing that's going to, the problem now is that that that's like an untapped market up there. So Calgary is the secrets out, and the Fan Expo guys, you know, did their Vancouver show this year just just kind of on a whim, and it was it was. You know, phenomenally successful. So that whole part of of northern northwestern Canada is going to start to see lots of shows now. And the Canadians are just rabid fans of comics, and they couldn't be nicer people. And, 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 and I had a great time. Small city, you know. I mean, there's not a hell of a lot to do up in Calgary, but it's but that's Calgary. It's a small town. It's literally like you know, uh, wilderness type part. It, there's nothing in Calgary, but you know. The turnout for the show was unfucking believable, yeah. and I had heard the opposite. I had heard that it was it was you know a real small, it was a dead show. Maybe it was you know a couple of years ago, but this year, phew, you know, it was like a tit fuck. It was crazy. <laughs> it was. That's going to be in the marketing like a tit fuck. Come to Calgary. Yeah, no, it was it was a great show. I mean, as was Emerald. Emerald at this point, I think they they've just they, they've. They've gotten to the point where they got to expand now. I mean, it's just too big. They're going to have – Jim told me they're going to expand out in the hallway and they're going to add a lot more exhibitor space mm-hmm. out in that convention area. But, uh, you know, it's uh, it's tough, man, because I can't, I can't do, you know, tons of shows like I used to. I can only do one a month at the most because with the family now, you know, I, I'm like, you know, I'm busier than a $2 bitch. I just don't have time to <laughs> – to be going to, you know, Skidictity in Sarasota. <laughs> hey, did you hear the, the, they got a show down in, you know, like, guy, guys, guys, I, I can't do every show. I did this show this weekend, you know, for this guy, Vert, because, you know, it was, it, was in, it was in town. It was 20 minutes from my house. So, How was uh, C2E2 for you, though? C2E2 is all right. You know, it's nice. It's, it's growing. I do artist. When I do artist alley, it's, it's a no-brainer. You know, it, it, it's easier for me than when I do the whole big Alex Ross love fest. You mm-hmm. know, that's, you know, that's a dry hump when you got to do the Alex shit. It's a lot of work and a lot of bullshit. I'm a whore when I do that stuff. <laughs> when I do Artist Alley, you know, I can actually talk. But I got stuck next to Billy Tucci. And, and he, he better hope God has a sense of humor, that son of a bitch. <laughs> Cause, you know, he's selling Sergeant Rock and he's selling religious books. And, he, you know, he, he never stops fucking talking. You know, you think I'm bad. Sit next to that son of a bitch. <laughs> Tries to sell a pulp a double bed, that cocksucker. I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I got stuck next to him, and who was on the other side of me? Some fucking guy, you know, <laughs> painted belt buckles or some bullshit. I don't know. No. There's always some guy who's got, like, a coffee can or, you know, I don't know what the fuck he does, and he's there with his wife, and... You know, she she threw up, or there's a fight, or there's some fucking Filipino guy with a knife. There's always or buzz, some bullshit. <laughs> well, that's a we'll go into the segue. Uh, Filipino artists um, this year, we actually lost um, Tony Dezaniga and uh, Ernie Chan. Did you uh, yeah. know either of those two gentlemen at all? Yeah, you know, I was uh, I was fortunate enough to know both of them. I, I knew Ernie pretty well buzz introduced me to the filipino guys mm-hmm. a few years ago at shows they were always regulars at WonderCon. i got to know ernie really well he was uh helped him with his at website like i was just always a huge fan tony same way you know enormous fan he did a well, i asked him to do a piece for me for a time ago he did a piece for me super nice guy ernie forget it ernie was like the salt of the earth ernie was the sweetest fucking guy you'd ever meet I mean, he liked his whores and he liked his booze. <laughs> you know, well, who doesn't? No, no what? Who doesn't? I mean, talk to Jamie. You know, <laughs> but, the but, <laughs> but you know, don't talk to Peter because you know he goes the other way. But uh, 
sweetest guy. Uh, would literally show up some mornings where he didn't he didn't go in from the night before. You know, he liked to go out and hit you know and hit the sauce once in a while. But sweet guy had you know some amazing stories. I always picked his brain about John Buscema and all the, and all the guys he worked with and all the you know all the great covers he he did through the years for for DC and Marvel. So I hadn't heard anything about it. When I heard about it, I was shocked because I just saw him at a show and and again Ernie. A lot of times he gets overused where where a lot of these because some of these guys are jagoffs, but Ernie's the sweetest guy you ever meet. The same with so was Tony, you know, nicest guys. Tony, I had a feeling. Tony, you got the feeling when you were around him that you didn't want to fuck with him. I think he was he was juiced in with the Filipino mafia, honest to God. He just seemed like, you know, he was a guy that wouldn't hesitate to pull, you know, pull a razor on you in a heartbeat if he didn't meet his page rate or something. So, <laughs> I, and, and I got that impression from a lot of the other guys. Alex Nino is like that. Alex Nino is another Philip of that Filipino uh, group that, you know, from the 70s that, that I mean, just couldn't be a bigger fan of and, I've been lucky enough to sit next to them at shows, and, and Alex is, Nino is just like, you know, one of the most talented guys out there that a lot of people forgot about, you know, but he's still out there. He still does shows. I think he's a, one of the guests at uh, at San Diego this year, you know, thankfully. So he's another one of those guys that um, if you, you're not familiar with his work, you, you definitely got to check him out. And again, well, I'm sorry, San Diego, you mentioned that it's like two weeks away. Yeah, I'm 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 up to my ass in it, man. I am I have been working my ass off getting ready. You know, it's it's uh, it, it gets a little easier because you kind of know what's coming. You know, you know how much work is involved, and and it goes so fast. Before I turn around, it's you know how it is. It's time to come home. Mm-hmm. These, these things go quick, but uh, yeah, it's um, we 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 it's a shorter. You know, it's a week sooner this year. Mm-hmm. And then we lose time next week because of the Fourth of July. So uh, yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm busting my ass. Today was one of those days, man. I was, uh, I was running like Conta Quinte today, man. It was fucked. Because so. you get there like on the Tuesday or the Monday, don't you? I get there on Monday. Monday. Uh, yeah, because Tuesday we got to start with the Teamsters and the bullshit mm-hmm. and the badges and the hotels and the, and the hookers and the heroin <laughs> and all the stars, you know. And I, I leave Monday. I went in a little earlier one year, and trust me, there's nothing going on before the con. And uh, but we start set up. You know, we start. You, I got You know, you may got to make a lot of reservations and for electricity and bullshit and, and signage and all your shipping. You got to get all that bullshit straightened away on Monday, and then Tuesday you start setting up, and then Wednesday is really a half day because the show starts Wednesday night. Yeah. So, and then I just, you know, I shit blood for the next five days. So. <laughs> well, you have any, the... you guys, any of you guys going or? Well, yeah, I'm going out this year again. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and anybody else going or no? No, you're stuck no. with pants again. No, just pants. What the fuck? Do you guys not like pants or what's going on? No, we just don't have the disposable income that he seems to have to be able to go to all these shows. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and San Diego gets more expensive every year, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really does. I get, I get a lot of. I'm getting into the red zone, you know, now where I start to get a lot of of the 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 third level retards that nag me for shit like the week before, you know. And I'm like, I, you know, hey Sal, you know what? I thought, you know, maybe I'll go to San Diego. So, can you help me get a room? And I need about eight passes. And I, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, sure. The fuck do I look like? You know, I mean, well, what is this? You know, what do you need? It? You need a bionic dick, too? You want, you want to get you one of those? I'm like, guys, uh, who the fuck do I look? All of a sudden, I'm Jackie Gleason. I got to get everybody everything they need. The fuck out of here. Why can't it ever be like a hot broad? You know, like, hey, Sal, listen, we're having a dick-sucking contest on the roof. And uh, give us a couple of passes, you know, huh. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be playing ball two, and you know that movie Jamie gave us money and produced back in the eighties, mm-hmm. you know, and, and Pants is coming by later. He's the, he's our stunt cock, <laughs> and uh, Tiziano holds the light. <laughs> and as long as you don't got a hairy ass, we need you there. You know, yeah. never anything like that. Never. It's always like three fucking straggalooies show up, sleep. Streep in their fucking car, and they're like, hey, Sal, I need 18 badges and a room and uh, your left shoe. Can you help us out? And then you go, 
Go fuck yourself. And then they get made in a, oh, well, excuse me. You know, I, I like the old Sal. You used to be a nice guy. It, when? When was I ever a nice guy? You know? You know it's, it, 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 it's, it's, like I said, and it's literally like the week before the con. You know, they don't ask you in the spring or, you know. They, they, they hit you with it like 11th hour. So I guess now would be a bad time to ask for a room then, huh? No, and, and I'm like, yeah, when the no, fuck I'm did here. I become all of a sudden I'm Orbitz, where I, I can get the room? I'm like, get out of here. What do I look like? You know, I always love when, when, where is this bulletin board that says, call the fat guinea if you need a room, you know? <laughs> call this jack off. Because I'm one of them guys where I'm there, and I'm working like a bitch at that show. I mean, I'm up every morning at 6.30, and I'm getting to bed at night at 11 o'clock, and and you know my I'm fucking my tongue is hanging out. I work that show. Most guys they show up when they feel like it. Two o'clock. They're out drinking. They're pissing in you know the lobby. <laughs> you know, they're showing up whenever they feel. I, I don't I don't have that luxury. I'm like the fucking McDonald's manager. You know, I gotta <laughs> open the door and I gotta swab the bathrooms and I gotta close it at night. <laughs> Will you have the usual cast of characters at the booth this year? Yeah, uh, yeah. Where, where the fuck am I going? You, know, you think I you think I would have learned and, and gotten my shit together? Are you kidding? It's like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm Lauren Green, you know, in Battlestar Galactica. I just got the ragtag usual group of hillbillies <laughs> and fucking ne'er do wells and jagoffs that come by, and the only time they know my name is when they need shit. So never, hey Sal, hey, I saw this, I thought you'd like it. Never, never anything like that. It's always, hey, did you hear, uh, uh, and then they lower their voice. Did you, did you hear that Jamie got arrested? No. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, what do you want from me? You know, Jamie doesn't need my help, does he? And it's like, well, he just thought you wanted to know. You know like, the fuck do I know? No, you know? Nobody ever says, hey, Sal, how are you? Never. It's always some bullshit. Like, I got two friends of mine, and they're out in the lobby, and they can't get in. So can we borrow your badge? And it's like, well, what do you, what do you, what do you, I wouldn't do that for my wife. <laughs> I'd select some of these guys. Or I love the guys that go, you got any extra badges? Because I know some guys over by the tracks that'll buy them for $300. <laughs> and I go, yeah, yeah, like we're in high school, you know, or we're, we're buying pot from the cops or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, no, yeah, I'm going to get fucked with, say, with Comic-Con because I need to make $300 selling extra badges. It's like, get out of here. Yeah, they're they're really strict. I mean, they they can even ask for ID when you come in the door this year, you know, with your well, with your badge. It, yeah. It's like it's like anything else. It's it's the, you know, I had heard that the whole Twilight situation changed everything, mm -hmm. you know, because you got so many people that were were getting badges for certain things, and then they were turning around and they were flipping them, or they were selling them, or they were giving them, or they were like, you know, one guy was using, you know, four people were using one badge, and last year they caught a lot of counterfeiting. So, you know, it's like anything else. You know, there's always going to be, anytime anything's sold out and, and making a lot of money, there's always going to be people in line to try to, you know, dupe the system. You know, it's like Van Halen tickets, for Christ's sake, you know, <laughs> when you're in high school. You know, or it was Tiziano. It's like John Tesh tickets. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? There's always no. They they had told me that they caught guys duping passes at the at, at FedEx last year oh in the God. Kinkos in the lobby. You know, <laughs> right on the right on the fucking copy machine. You know, th th these yeah, these are not guys th that we no. need working in the CIA. Obviously, <laughs> no. these guys didn't give that shit a lot of thought. You know, so I was like, it, it's gonna happen. You know, I like to help out whenever I can. You know, anything I can do, I like to do favors. But it's the closer you get to the con, it it's used to be, you know, this much fun and this much work. Now it's just all work. You know, I don't I don't have any time to, to enjoy myself hardly. You know, I, my only luxury is I go back to the hotel and take a shit. That's all I do. Because the bathrooms at Comic-Con are like, there's just shit on the walls and on the, you know, everywhere. I mean, how guys shit and hit the walls, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. It's like twirl paints with diarrhea when you walk in somebody's stall. You know, you, you, you see the women's bathrooms, you could fucking eat ice cream off the toilet seats. The guys' bathrooms, they're like, they're like psychopaths you, when you go in there. Piss on the floor, and then they, they drop their back issue in there, and they pull it out and wring it out. Oh. You know, I'm not kidding. You've seen those bathrooms. Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. My only luxury is I walk back to the hotel when I got to drop a deuce. I am not fucking around in that bathroom. 
Oh, yeah. So, and, it, and there's always, like, uh, uh, parting the Red Sea in there, and there's always, like, water all over the floor. All over the floor. Piss on the floor. Yeah. Hopefully there's, it's water. There's turds. You know, the shit. I mean, there's shit everywhere. Everywhere. Nobody flushes the toilet. You know, and it, it just becomes one of those deals where I'm like, I don't know. I'll, I'll piss anywhere. You know what I mean? If I got to. It doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm no Boy Scout when it comes to that kind of shit. But, but during the day, if I gotta go, I'm not going in at those johns. They're just, they're out of control, man. During the day, I mean, you can't believe what they do to those bathrooms. It's like eighth grade shit. You know, they throw the wet toilet paper on the ceiling. You know, it, it's just, it's high school shit. So I say, no, no, I'm going back to the hotel. And, you know, at least, uh, that, that's that's my one little, my one luxury. I mean, do you do anything after the cons at all at the Comic Con? You just like just totally wiped out. No, we go eat. You know, I mean, that's my thing. Is I try to I make reservations at restaurants every night when I get there for every night after the show because once you once the show lets out, forget it. It's, mm-hmm. it's like the fucking fall of Saigon. I mean, there's nowhere to go. <laughs> the streets are full. Every restaurant there's a list. There's you know you can't get in. Uh, you know, you got to play cut and fuck to get anywhere. So I make reservations ahead of time, and that's that's my one thing is I, I book a restaurant every night for 830 because the food at the con, you know how it is. It's, oh, yeah. It's, and, and I don't get a chance to, to really sit down and enjoy myself because, it, it, you know, it's Murphy's Law. The five minutes that you, you stop to eat a sandwich, that's when somebody comes. I could stand there for three hours and nobody will bother me. The minute I go to put a sandwich in my mouth, some Jagos got to ask me about Shazam or some bullshit or <laughs> Boba Fett or do I know where to get cookie jars for fucking Jar Jar Bing or have I seen, you know. One guy came up to me one year. He goes, hey, do you know Phil? I'm looking for Phil. I'm looking around going, what the fuck are you talking about? So, uh, so let me get this straight. Out of everybody here, you can't find Phil. You just ask somebody at random? What are you, fucking nuts? I mean, I, what kind of a sick maniac just out of nowhere comes up to me? And I said, yeah, I know Phil. He's in the back. You know, he walked over by Sideshow, and uh, he's the guy trying to cornhole the Cyclops, you know, statue. What the fuck? You know? I mean, and, and you get enough, you get enough, ma- you know, maniacs at that show as it is. But some of the guys that come up to the booth, they're just amazing. The questions you get asked, you know, for stuff. Is this the real art or is this? Uh, no, it's it's holograms. Right. <laughs> what the fuck do you think it is? What, what is you it? Know, le- it's like, what does the letter K stand for? It stands for a thousand. No, also- no, no, no. <laughs> I get I, what I get all day are people that think I'm Alex Ross. So they come up <laughs> to me and they go, "I want you to know that I'm your biggest fan." I uh, let me stop you. <laughs> stop you before you go on and you say any more you know uh, you're my biggest fan but you don't know what i look like because i'm not alex and then they oh sorry and they get all embarrassed and they run away and, and i feel bad but they, uh, they that happens all day they, they well where is he well i don't want to talk to you i want to talk to him well you know why is he here because i'm i'm the filter what can i tell you you know i'm the i'm the, the i'm the pimp i've you know? I, i've stood at that at your booth talking to you and and you know Jesse and Chris and all the rest of the guys and invariably no matter when I stop or what I I always hear the question is Alex here and I'm like dude if Alex Ross was here he'd be like headlining this show <laughs> or as his that, name would it, be there it's not that you know it's not that he doesn't you know it's a it's a planned thing he just doesn't like to do shows he prefers to stay home and work you know, it's not like one of those deals where he's too good for shows mm-hmm. or any of that bullshit. And I tell guys all the time, I go, guys, he's just not his thing. He's not a knock-around guy when it comes to hanging out at cons and, yeah. you know, talking about cocks and balls and all that shit that we do. You know, <laughs> that's, what he's got, you know that's what he's got me for. And, and it, he's gone to San Diego a lot of times in the past, but, but you know, he just prefers not to do it. Sure. You know, and, and you know, he there's some years where he's like, yeah, all right, maybe we'll go if he's got something to promote, or, or he's you know he's got something, you know, that, that's important that he wants to pimp or do a panel. But he he would like to just go. But the problem is now is they want you to do you know in order to go they got you signed up for tons of shit. They got to do panels, mm-hmm. and bullshit, and you know he, he just doesn't like to do all that shit. So, but you know, this year Tiziano's working with me with. Um, with Sinkavich and Steve Epstein, they got a, they're splitting a booth, and uh, that's going to be interesting to see how that whole thing works out. It's the, it's the Gamecock and the Pollock, I told them, those two. <laughs> Steve, 
Steve is a, just super nice guy. You won't meet a nicer guy than Steve Epting and a great artist. And it's Kevich, he's he's the closest fucking thing to Pollock genius that you'll ever find. I mean, he's he's always been, you know, my my favorite guy. He's unfucking believable how talented he is. So they're gonna have a ten by ten, and they're gonna, you know, we'll see how that goes, and we'll see how much of a you know, if it turns into like when the Hell's Angels did security for the Rolling Stones <laughs> or what the fuck happens, you know? <laughs> With Tiziano running that fucking booth, that ought to be, Oh, you know, my God. Yeah, that ought to be a fucking wet dream, you know, like a Roman nightmare, that fucking thing. You know? Now, now like, is, is this at San Diego? It's at San Diego, yeah. Oh, okay. So it'll be like a Fellini movie when you go back there. <laughs> well, that, how's that going to happen? Because Tiz has to take a smoke break every every, every twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, Tiz is. Yeah, Tiz. We're doing. Uh, we're going to do Nicorette enemas to keep, <laughs> keep Tiziano going. He says he's cutting back. I mean, I don't know what that means. If that means three packs a day, or it means you know, I don't know what it does. But he he seems to get a good handle on it when he has to. You know, go out and he could do. You know, uh, and again, it's not my problem. It's not my, you know, that's that's his thing, and and I'm sure he'll you know do a good job. And he's got people, he's got all those 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 fan expo jagoffs that work with them, who I'm sure will <laughs> turn it into turn it into a fist fuck. You know how those those, those fan expo guys are. Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> you know, it's like wow. You know, when they bring those guys, he's just like, hey, all right. You know, get out of the way with that one, because they haven't discovered the wheel yet over there. <laughs> so you just, you know. So, but again, Steve and, and Sienkiewicz, they should they should do great. I mean, I know that that uh, Bill always has a has a <clears throat> tremendous following at shows, and I know Steve doesn't do a lot of cons. So, you know, it'll be good. They're right near me too, so it'll be nice when they they need to come over and you know ask if I've got any tampons or anything like that. <laughs> great <laughs> douche. You know, hey, it sounds, sounds you got any douche? Because uh, I, I had the vinegar and oil douche, and it's not working well. So uh, <laughs> someone told me you had a mass and guilt dispenser back here. I, I we'll, believe it at we'll that see. setup. We'll see. You know, I mean, it ought to be interesting. You know, I mean, but I don't have Jesse this year. Um, it, I just couldn't couldn't deal with it anymore. It just got to be like, you know. It was just a, it was just a bad fucking. It was like a Michael Mann film. Whenever I had, uh, you know, Jesse working for me, it was just always some fucking, some bullshit. It was like Carlito's way behind the booth. I couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. But I got the two hillbillies, um, Chris and Justin, and you know, we'll see how that works out. As long as uh, you got plenty of beef jerky, a Mountain Dew, those two are happy. And then I hire, uh, I got like, an, I started using an agency. You know, where they uh, you, they send you people and you don't know them, and it's like Vietnam. I don't want to know your name. I don't want to know who the fuck you are. <laughs> so if it doesn't work out, I could fire you at lunchtime. You know, I don't want to hear it. You know. Wow, well, when you said agency, I thought, oh, is it that, you know, booth babes? But uh... I've done that in the past, and they turn out to be the biggest cunts you'll ever deal with. You know, <laughs> they show up. No, 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 really. They show up late, they expect special treatment. And they want to leave early. They don't want to work. You know, they're those hot broads in high school that they're used to getting their way. And they say they want to work trade shows, and they don't understand that trade show means, you know, you got to stand on your feet a lot. And I've done that in the past, and it's always a mistake. And then who's ever working with you suspends all day hitting on them. <laughs> you know, and, and it, it's like, guys, this isn't fucking pretty in pink. You know, I want to get some <laughs> shit done here. And I, the booth babes were just a bad idea. It, it never works out. If you're there for, you know, strictly for promotion, great. You know, there's nothing, you know, better than having a pretty girl. But if you're actually trying to sell stuff, you need, you know, you need to have some kind of a focus and some idea of, you know, what you're trying to do, you know, over the five days. Because it's a, it's a, it's a marathon, man. It's five days, and it kicks your ass. And you do everything you can to to, to stay alert and not be rude and not not get tired. Because sometimes fatigue can can turn you into a jag off. <laughs> but uh, you know, um, it's it's part of the bit, you know, part of the business, especially on the weekends, because you get a whole second, you get a whole. It's like a it's like a rollover. You know, Wednesday night is is a lot of the serious. You know, preview night used to be a joke. Preview night was just a was a you know it was just kind of a it was only open for for exhibitors and it was bullshit. But then they turned it into only five day pass. People can come in on on preview night, so that means those are the hardcore. Do you know? 
collectors and, mm-hmm. and people that are trying to get shit ahead of everybody else. So preview night is, is really, you got to be, a, you know, bring your A game on Wednesday night. And then, you know, most of the show the rest of the way is, is the, the, you know, the regular people you see at a lot of shows. But the weekend is the L.A. crowd. That's when all the people come in from L.A. because they only come for the weekend. You got a lot of the, you know, the movie people. So you get a whole different clientele on the weekend. You get that L.A. bullshit. Everybody's a big shot. Everybody's got a business card, you know. Everybody's a fucking producer or, you know, Harry Reams or <laughs> you know, you know, Randy Stryker or fucking Harry Paratestes. Everybody's got a big <laughs> moniker and they're, I'm with Paramount. Yeah, buy something. You know, was, I'm like, the, I've become like that Chinese guy on Canal Street in New York. You going to buy anything? You're not? All right, then get out of here. Leave me alone. Stop bothering me with this bullshit, you know. <laughs> Bring me a sandwich. You'll get my attention. <laughs> Something with bacon in it. I don't care what the fuck it is, you know. But you got to be nice to everybody because you never know who the fuck you're talking to mm-hmm. at, at Comic Con. You know, everybody. You know, the, the rule. Some of my biggest clients look like the biggest jagoffs you'd ever see. You know, if you judge a book by its cover. But a lot of times, that's the angle they're going with. They don't want you to know who they are. They don't want you to to, to create different. You know, a different, you know, uh, relationship with them because you think they got a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So, what do, what do, guys, what do I know? I you, had me on, you had me on once a year, <laughs> and I never shut the fuck up. <laughs> and I hear snoring in the background from everybody else. <laughs> Jamie's already put, Jamie's cutting his toenails. Yep. <laughs> okay. Pants, Pants is already surfing the internet now. He's on, you know, bigtoolforyou.com. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else is on fucking Twitter or, you know, fucking around and pulling up old Christy Canyon videos or some bullshit, you know. Well, I actually am on a website. Uh, it's the WBEZ website out of Chicago. Um, I saw this that I guess a couple of weeks ago you were part of a, a I guess, a panel uh, called Superheroes Hollywood's Rewriting of History. Can you fucking believe it? I mean, yeah. Are they are they digging the bottom of the fucking barrel now? Or I what? guess. <laughs> so what was that all about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, a guy that I know that owns Dark Tower Comics in Chicago. I guess he was approached by some of the BEZ guys. That's the that's the I guess it's the NPR. It's the it's the public radio. It's all that hippie shit. You know, the public radio station where they talk about anarchy and overthrowing the government. And, <laughs> You know, don't use a urinal or anything with a <laughs> brand on it. Shit like that, you know. Okay. So we got to be, yeah, you're real smart. It's real dry. You know, they, they um, play classical music, shit like that. So uh, they had a, they have a series, I guess a summer series here in town at the Biograph Theater, which is the Goodman, where they do, you know, different topics. So they asked me, hey, you know, I, I don't know if they needed Joey, the Joey Bishop guy or whatever the fuck it was. You know, they needed one jag off. You know, they needed one... One wild card. You know, you always need one freak, you know, one night crawler or one, you know, <laughs> guy that doesn't do shit. You know, I was like praying mantis in the Avengers in the seventies, where you're like, huh? Who? And it was a I guess they wanted to talk about, you know, what comic people liked and disliked about the trans you know, how comics have been translated into movies, you know, in the last thirty, forty years. <clears throat> so they got mad me and Mike Norton. And a couple other people, and, and you know, much smarter than I, who want to get up there and intellectualize about you know how smart they are and all this bullshit. So I said, yeah, sure, why not? What the hell? You know, and we went up, we, we just went up and bullshitted for a couple hours, and uh, it seemed to go over well. I mean, I don't know. They gave me a couple. They gave me a coffee mug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. They go here. Thanks, Sal, for doing this for you. Yeah, coffee mug. I'm like, oh, thanks. <laughs> what the fuck am I gonna do with this? You know. I'm like, I was like, oh, hey, wow. <laughs> Woo! Coffee mug. I could have got one of these at fucking Jiffy Loop, you know. <laughs> but it's nice. You know, you do it. It's, again, you get the word out. There's like six people now that read comics, you know, so you got to get the word out. And <laughs> do all you can. And my, as long as my mother doesn't, you know, my mother, no, just don't have the police calling here. You know? <laughs> so my mother, that was the only good, that was the bar she set for me, Jamie, was, you know, uh-huh. hey, listen. You know, that and I didn't want to do the perp walk where I put the jacket over the cuffs when I walked out of the fucking, when I walked out of the court, you know, the court building, you know, did the perp walk to my car. As long as I didn't do that, she's, she's fine with it. 
So I did that, and you know, it was. They seem like nice enough guys. What do I know? Mm-hmm. I, know I just thought it was kind of interesting because I saw you and Mike. Yeah, and we, uh, we talked a lot of shit. What movies we liked, what we didn't like, what movies we felt worked. You know, what didn't work. You know, what what we you know we absolutely hate. You know, why and things like that. And and you know, a lot of the stuff we've talked about before. You know, the the, the certain Batman movies that were just shit and stuff that we liked, and stuff we thought we they knocked out of the park. You know, anything with Ben Affleck in it sucked. <laughs> Anytime you let a broad kick your ass in a movie, it's not good. So, <laughs> so what did you think of the Avengers? I liked it. Thought it was great. I mean, I, again, anything comics wise that does well, I'm I'm happy. I don't I don't know about Spider Man. I mean, I, I want it to do well, but I got a I got a bad feeling about it. I don't know why. You know, I don't know if it's if it's. Uh, I'm sure it'll do well. I just don't know if I'm gonna like it. But Avengers really surprised me. I mean, Marvel. You got to give Marvel a lot of credit. They really, um, you know, Warner Brothers. I mean, the only thing I thought while I was watching it is I'm like, Jesus Christ, Warner Brothers really has got to get their shit together because, you know, they set the bar. And of course, Batman's coming out, and anything you know Chris Nolan does is usually fantastic. So, I'm really looking forward to Batman. Mm-hmm. But uh, I was I was pleasantly surprised. I I thought I was a little I was a little taken with with Black Widow kicking Hawkeye's ass, which I think is total bullshit. Hawkeye would have beat the shit out of her, you know. Scarlett Johansson or not. I don't know. What did you guys think? Did you like it or no? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we all loved it. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah, I think it was, uh, I mean, uh, you you never know what to believe anymore, but you hear all these, you know, so many rumors now what's going to be made into a movie, so you never know what characters are next, shit like that, so. I was I didn't I I so seldom get the chance to go to the show I have to like sneak. <laughs> no, I do. I'm serious. I got to go out in like the laundry truck. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I got to be. It's like Cape Fear. I got to like tie myself under the car, <laughs> like sneak out. But I got to go to the show because my wife's like, oh no no no, don't go see that. I want to go see it. And it's like, yeah, I'm still waiting from like you know the first Spider-Man movie because my <laughs> wife always tells me to wait. And when are we gonna go? You know, we got two kids and and you know my daughter is. You know, two years old, which means that you know her her, her favorite style, anything. Her favorite is whatever I am using. She has to break it or destroy it. <laughs> and my son gets a big kick out of kicking me in the balls. That's, that's, that's kind of, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Every time I see a picture of him, he doesn't look like the the ball kind of kicking kid. I never he's, do. He's a, he's a good kid, but he's a, he's a tremendous pain in the ass. Imagine that. Yes, yeah, gonna say wow. My father, my father, somewhere is laughing hysterically. I can uh-huh. tell you that it is. I apologize to my mother every time I see her because these kids are just absolutely kicking my ass. I mean, he was on vacation last week, and you know, every five seconds, it's like they got to do something else. Like, what about this? But what about that? And what about that? And, and and you know, weeks go by so fast. But then when you're watching your kids, it was like the week felt like three months. It was unbelievable. I was counting the days. I was like fucking Tim Robbins and Shawshank Redemption when I dropped them off this morning. I tore my shirt off and I looked at the sky with my arms out. I couldn't believe it. I was, I was, it was unfucking believable. I was, I was like, I couldn't believe it when I dropped them off this morning. The, the air was cleaner and fresher, and you know everything. Food tasted better. It was just unbelievable. When you got to watch a kid, you know, for a week solid, and you can't do shit. I mean, I, I work at home, so I, can, I mean, I can't do anything with my kids at home. And, and my wife says, like, bye. She's out the door. <laughs> my mother-in-law watches my daughter, but, you know, what are you going to say to a, to an old Japanese lady? You know, they still know all that crazy ninja shit. And, you know, blow dust in your face that's green, and, you know, you, you, know, you turn into scarecrow, shit like that. <laughs> can't say, can't fucking say anything around here if you want to wake up tomorrow and still, you know, not, you're not fucking think you're a cat or something. No. These fucking Asians, they're all shifty. Trust me. They're all up to some shit. Because when I dropped them off at Montessori, I asked them, I said, listen, guys, what the fuck is with the vacation? What is this shit with vacation? We pay you to watch the kids because we need to work. But you guys are a school and you keep taking vacations. I don't understand. They're five years old. What do you need a vacation from? You know, they're like, basically, they're just like, puppies in the window you just put a fence and let them run around they don't that's all they do all day you know <laughs> throw a couple of crayons in every once in a while in a bucket and they're happy 
So why must you do this to us? You know, every time I turn around, there's a holiday or some bullshit or you yeah, know. Benny Hanna's birthday. I think you mentioned before. Well, <laughs> Benny Hanna's birthday, they don't take off anymore. They take off fucking Jewish holidays. Well, how does that work? <laughs> You know, is that some bullshit or what? I go, what about Columbus Day? You guys don't fucking take off Columbus Day. You know, I mean, it's 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 racial profiling shit that pisses me off. No Italian holidays, no Italian superheroes. It's bullshit. <laughs> Jamie used to write letters. I used to read them in the letters column at Marvel all the time. You know, <laughs> about more grease balls and, and the Avengers. And they just said, no, leave yes. the fuck alone. You know? <laughs> I'd write them in the outrageous French. Show. Why no right. Italian? Right, he's superheroes. Right, right. like I Mario. Know. Like I was Mario. <laughs> Mario, yeah, we're chasing a gorilla around. That's all we got. We got Mario. Yeah, somebody actually said that to me one time. They go, "We got Mario." What are you talking about? I go, "Oh, great, Donkey Kong." There you go. <laughs> you know, you got you got the Sopranos. Oh, yeah, that's a positive role model. Hmm. Godfather's one of my favorite movies. Right, right. Just, I think the Scorpion was Italian. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Guy's always pissed off because he's trapped in a suit and he can't take a shit. You know? Well, are you like Tiz and a, a big fan of the uh, the Italian soccer team? A little bit. I got it. My, when I was in college, I got into soccer a little bit because my roommate was from Brazil, so I mm. I got you know I spent some time in Brazil and I got into soccer a little bit. And you know, I can watch it. I enjoy watching it. I mean, when it's when it's uh, big stuff like World Cup and Euro, I mean, the, the MLS shit we got here in Chicago is, you know, it's like fucking high school soccer. You know, it's just you go there and nobody speaks any English. Nobody. It's just either they're all Assyrians, Armenians, or Mexicans at, at MLS games. And I'm like, you know, I just can't relate to soccer. In for, These guys come from countries where it's their sport, man. You know, but growing up in Chicago, you know, we had baseball, football, and basketball. So. But yeah, I, I I've been getting into a little bit. I don't I don't like, you know, stay home from work or, or kill myself like some people do when their team loses. You know, they're still talking about it. I'm like guys, it's a fucking soccer game, big deal. You know, it's like stop it. You know, cut it out. Brian Azzarello, I know, is a big soccer guy. Some guys I know here in town talk about it and you know get together and party and get drunk and all that bullshit. You know. <laughs> I, Does is the kid into any sports? Who? Your, your son. son? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he likes to kick the ball as hard as he can at his sister. That's usually that's a big kick out of it. That was yeah. my favorite sport. Yeah. Me. yeah, he does that constantly. And, and he likes to, you know, he likes to take the hose and spray everything but the grass and the flowers. Sprays the neighbor and planes when they go by. He tries to spray the planes. So I don't know if he's training for Al-Qaeda. Um, uh, not really. He, you know, I'm trying to see if he's in the, you know, something where he, you know, you try to recognize is he into anything? Real good at using the remote and watching fucking shows that I can't stand. You know, shit that you just want to blow your brains out. Peppa Pig and Wubsy and just, just nausea. You know, the shit that they watch, I, I tell my wife, I go, I, if I got to watch any more, that's how fucking kid. You could never brainwash me. You could never do anything. I mean, Jason Bourne shit, waterboarding and put my head underwater. None of that would work after the hours of mind-numbing television I've had to watch because of my kid. <laughs> you know, you're in the middle of something really good, and they're like, you know, bink, and it changes all of a sudden. And I'm like, what the fuck? What, what was that? What is this? And then and I look in the corner, and a two-year-old figured out how to fuck me over. And it's my daughter. She just gives me the look like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and then she's got, she's like one of those those um, those jibbins at the zoo, where if you really piss her off, she just reaches in her ass and pulls out shit and throws it at you. <laughs> so I'm like, I, I got no say around here. None. I'm, 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 I'm not kidding. I'm like the substitute teacher in, in you know when you were in grammar school. And they just laugh when I yell because I can't do anything. I mean, I came from my mother and my dad. That was the beat the shit out of your generation. You know, my mother would get a piece of Hot Wheel track and your ass looked like a, you know, a whopper, you know, with the black lines on it if you didn't do what they told you. Now, you know, if you make them a bad lunch, they fucking write you up, you know, with family services and shit like that. So I'm like, I tell my wife, I go, I don't know what to do. Don't look at me. You know, I mean, I, I, you can't hit him, you can't yell at him, you can't say shit anymore. You know? So uh, it's like a Godzilla movie around here sometimes. I don't know what the fuck's going on. And 
and it's just run by Japanese all yelling at each other. I'm sitting in the corner like, let me the fuck alone. In fact, my old man used to say, old Italians don't die. We just see an open hole, and we just jump in. You know, we've had enough. I can't take it anymore. And when I hit my 70s and I go, ah, I've seen enough. I'm just jumping in. <laughs> Cover me up, throw in some back issues of fucking Eternals and leave me alone. I'll be fine. <laughs> Nobody will even know I'm gone around this house, believe me. So I go, all right, start throwing some of this shit out. You know, we need room. Does, the, uh, does your son uh, read comics at all? A little bit. You know, he tears the covers off to piss me off. <laughs> you know, he's just, a, a little, you know, I'm trying to, you know, he really likes the Bruce Timm stuff, the animated mm-hmm. Batman, and I've been trying to give him, you know, he'll look. But you know how it is. If you try too hard, then they go in the other direction. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that he, he, you know, goes towards comics. You know, I mean, I'm trying to, you know, my wife wants to get him a tablet and all the rest of that shit. And with my luck, you know, he'll re, he'll reprogram satellites or some shit and <laughs> FBI will come to knock on the door, and I'll, you know, I'll be on the front of the newspaper. Some bullshit, you know, because I'm, a, because I'm like, I don't know what was going on. I went to get a sandwich. I don't know anything around here. I'm serious. I can't even take a shit in peace. It's like The Walking Dead. There's arms coming under the fucking door, and the doorknobs turning real slow. You know, it's like a fucking Hitchcock sequence when I'm in the bathroom. The kids gotta fuck with me when I'm in the bathroom. They turn the light off. My son figured out where the fuse box was. <laughs> Dude, sitting all some fucking house goes dark. I go, what did I have? I got a brain tumor. I go, what the fuck's going on? She's like, oh, he's playing with the fuse box. I go, and you know he's playing with the fuse box. I go, what, 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 is, what is he? All of a sudden, you know, it's a fucking James Bond movie where they turn off the fuse box. <laughs> No, fuck with the garden hose, tear all the heads off the flowers. It's just, it's just, just, imagine, think of ten things to really piss you off, and that's what kids do all day. Those ten things. Uh, you know, shit you really like, throw it through a wood chipper, destroy it, piss on it, and, and drag it across. I, had a, I have a cat. I haven't seen him in like three years. I don't know where the fuck he is. This cat's like, fuck this. I don't know. He's like became a chair. He looks like a wall. He figured out how to turn like the wallpaper. He does. He comes out at like midnight. He's got like a black face. You know, he's got a stocking cap on. He's like, are they gone? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. They went upstairs. Fuck. Oh. That cat's the smartest one in the whole house. I swear to God. I don't know where the fuck she lives. She's like Newt, an alien. You know, he lives under the vent and shit. You know, so when the aliens come out, <laughs> you don't need fucking with me. That's my cat. If I was smart, I'd find where she lives, and I'd fucking go live down there with her. <laughs> oh, mercy. Actually, I, I had a question. Um, recently on your Facebook, you put up a, a really, really beautiful painting. Um, can you t- talk about that and where that came from? Well, which one? I put up, uh, was it was it Sienkiewicz? Was it, uh, uh, I, put up, I put up different, lately I've been putting up some of the pieces that I have people do for me for Atomica. Was it the face? Was it Atomica's face, or was it? Uh, uh, it's the Street Children of Rio de Janeiro. Oh, I'm, well, that was mine. Um, yeah. I, you know, you said a really beautiful painting. I just assumed it was, you know, guys you heard of. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm working. I'm, I'm like, I'm when I, when I actually have time to, to construct a thought, you know, I'm working on a uh, graphic novel right now, which is something I started in the '90s when I was in college. I spent some time in Rio de Janeiro, and um, it's it's something near and dear to my heart. It's a it's not going to be single issues. It's going to be a graphic novel, and it's about uh, the street kids in uh, in Rio. How they live on the street, and the millions of kids that just have to survive off of you know begging, and they're into they're into sniffing paint. It's it's a horrible situation, and it's kind of a depressing book. But I'm I'm going to do it in a in a horror angle. You know, it's kind of a boogeyman kind of an angle. Uh, where some of the kids have have these dreams and different things like that, so it's something kind of a departure from Atomica, but it still you know kind of fits my art style because it's fucked up. <laughs> no, it is. I mean, it's it's very. But I'm but but this is one that I'm doing. I'm I'm doing absolutely everything that I possibly can myself. I'm doing covers. I'm doing the colors. I'm doing uh, everything but the lettering. The lettering you just you need to digitally because it's just easier. And uh, it's it's something that I wish I'd have done more of with Atomica. You know, you just kind of, I, I don't know if I had, uh, I, I was kind of paranoid that, you know, the book, I didn't want Atomica to look 
too much like an indie book. I wanted to be able to give it a professional polish. So I, you know, I had guys do covers for me and different things. But this is something that's near and dear to my heart. I don't know if people are going to give a shit, but I know that I've done a lot of research you know, through Amnesty International and stuff like that and spent some time there in the 80s. And I've heard it's only much worse now. So, but that's... Yeah, I've seen documentaries I, I, on that. It's it's really frightening. It's pretty bad. It, it's yeah. terrible. I mean, when I was there, I mean, it, Rio was a life altering experience for me because when I went, I went, I was, I was at USC in film school, and it was USC just as the bourgeois rich kid. Not that I was. I was, I was working my way through college, but uh, it was just the first time I'd ever been out of the United States, and it was just the absolute biggest kick in the ass I'd ever received. I'd never experienced or seen anything like that. Little kids, and when I say, you know, we think of homeless, we think of, you know, there's a lot of substance abuse, or there's there's guys that are just down on their luck, or they're a little, you know, they're just, they're just fucked in the head a little bit, and there's not a lot you can do for them. Other guys, you, you can help them get back on their feet. In Rio, it's children. It's kids. It's It's like... You know, four years old, three years old, you know, all the way up to like you know maybe fifteen or sixteen, because most of them don't make it past their teens, and uh, they just literally are, are they live in the streets and they're treated. They're not. There's no support system. There's no network to help them. There's no, you know, uh, not a lot of the government doesn't even recognize it. A lot of it, and it's a horrible situation. And I was just, I was, I couldn't believe it. I was, I came back and I was a changed person. <clears throat> by what I saw, so I always felt there was something there that I wanted to do, you know, uh, artistically. And uh, again, I don't know. I don't know if anybody's going to give a shit. It's a really <laughs> depressing subject, but uh, you know, I thought, hey, I can. I'm always. I've got some other things I want to go back to, but this was something I, I felt was important to do. So. Yeah, it it really caught my eye because it was reminiscent of a lot of the painters that I was studying in art school back in the the late eighties. And, and I, I just assumed that it was, you were doing it as more of a painting than, than a book. But if, if the book's going to look like that, it's going to be gorgeous. Yeah, I'm going to, yeah, that was, I do some using markers. You know, I have a marker. I was a, I was an uh, advertise worked in advertising. I was a, uh, I was a storyboard artist, and, you know, production guy at Leo Burnett and a couple other smaller agencies in town. And, uh, I just, I'm going to try it this way. I mean, I'm going to do four stories. It's four short stories. I'm going to do one in marker, one in pencil, one um, watercolor, and um, the other one um, probably, you know, copic marker as well. So I'm, I'm just experimenting because right now the way comics are, why not? You know, I think no, it's, certainly, yeah. it's, it's just I think it's a good time to do it because there's just not a lot of different stuff out there. A lot of it just seems to be a lot of the same shit, and I'm, I – you know, uh, this this comics is just always near and dear to me, but I'm just not a big fan of a lot of the same regurgitated shit that's out there now. So, not that I'm a hater, you know, but I, I, I still look, and there's just tremendously talented guys out there, but just there's not a lot of stuff out there that really kind of gets my eye now. So, what do I know? But you see, guys, when I when I go off on that tangent, you see how boring it is? <laughs> when I don't talk about cocks and balls and... You know, sphincters and fissures and stuff. Nobody cares. No. And three finger magillas. Yeah, basically. <laughs> you know, the... <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, Jamie, Jamie's. I saw some of the stuff he did on the uh, the special edition DVD of Ball Two. <laughs> and, uh, and there's some interesting. Uh, some of my best work. Really. Some interesting <laughs> insight. But when the book is done, I'll. I'll when I don't. I don't like to talk about it too much because I find a lot of graphic novels and a lot of indie projects, artists tend to talk about it, which tends to, you know, takes the place of doing it. And, you know, there's nothing worse to people that keep talking about this project and, it, you know, it never comes out. So I'm working on it. Um, it's unfortunately really, really labor intensive because I'm doing everything and I'm doing all these crazy details double page spreads and all this shit and I just would rather when it's done and ready to show you that I'd rather come on and say hey guys this is uh it's something that's um you know it's near and dear to my heart so it's very important to me this project and then after that I'm working on this book called uh, Dago's on the Moon <laughs> cool bit of a departure what a follow up well it's 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 black humor it's black comedy it's, it's meant to be tongue in cheek but it's gonna be you know, I'm going to draw it in a in a serious style. It's a 
squadron of Italian uh, from the Italian Air Force in World War II. They get lost and they wind up on the moon. Because the Italian Air Force in World War II is basically fucked up. So they're like, imagine Tiziano only in the Air Force. That's what it is. <laughs> Me, Jamie, and Tiziano in an airplane. Imagine that, you know. <laughs> and as long as it was a place to stop and get to get a fucking uh, brisket sandwich on the way, we'd be happy. Yeah. Now, I, I saw you did an interview with uh, Bleeding Cool um, just recently. And I, you said something about there may be somewhere down the road some additional uh, Atomica stories. Yeah, well, you know what? I, I don't look. I don't know if it was a mistake to to build momentum and, and create an identity with Atomica and then kind of go away. But the God is Red story arc was always meant to just be twelve issues. It was some characters I felt you know like Hellboy and certain are just meant to tell a story and kind of move on. And I kind of felt that way with Atomica, but there were there were other things we were thinking of doing. But to be honest with you, the sales of the book were just never great. Mm. People liked it, but they didn't always buy it. Now, a lot of that was my art style is just a weird. Some of that was my fault because of the continuity of the book. I ran out of money. I didn't have time to. You know, I couldn't afford to put the book out as a monthly. A lot of it was, um, you know, again, it's just the book wasn't meant for everybody. So I always. The Hostage, which is the book about the the kids in Rio de Janeiro, was something that I'd always wanted to do, but I wanted to cut my teeth with Atomica um, because that was the superhero genre is clearly my favorite. So, yeah, there there was you you know USSA was a was a big graphic novel that I wanted to do, which tells the story of how you know America lost the the war to the Soviet Union in the 50s. That was meant to be a big graphic novel. But again, I just felt that maybe Atomica was just, it was time to do something a little different and then go back to Atomica later on. But I'll, I'll always have that, you know, that bald headed Russian that I got to deal with, you know, in one form or another. It's just good to know that there's something down the road. Oh, yeah. No, I, 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 I you know, it's, I'll always, you know, I, I just felt that there was a couple of things that I wanted to do. I don't know. I really don't know if people give a shit about the single issues anymore when it comes to indie titles because a lot of stores don't order them or they don't order a lot of them, and then it's hard for people to get all the issues because, I mean, all I predominantly hear at at shows other than your jag-off is (laughs) is, uh, the trade. I'm waiting for the trade. Where is the trade? People want the trade. Mm -hmm. They they find it easier. Um, Atomica is going to be – I'm working with, with Comicology now. Uh, to put a Tamaga on the on the, the tablet and things like that, because you know the twelve issues are are you know, the files are are there. I don't know a lot about it. I mean, we you guys know a lot about comicology. I mean, are they cool guys? Are they not? I mean, I dealt yeah. with them through, through emails. I know there's a lot of companies out there now that do it. Comicology seems to be the biggest one, but I'm worried they're going to focus on Marvel and DC and then not give a shit about indie titles. No, com- com- I I actually buy a ton of independent stuff off of Comixology. Okay, it's it's easier I mean, to get indie indie stuff there than it is going to an LCS. All right, I mean they seemed like they were the, they were the best bet because they get the, you know they're out there and they're the most aggressive and they're doing the most coverage. And I get a lot of people that ask about Atomica for the for the iPad and things like that. And and the new stuff I'm doing, you you know you have to format it for everything. You have to format it for print and for the tablet now, it's just, you know, you're crazy not to. But I didn't, you know, I didn't know a lot about, because there's so many of these, there's so many companies now that, you know, have comics online. I didn't know, you know, who was full of shit or who was, you know, Tiziano or who was, you know, <laughs> companies that, you know, because you come, cause that's the problem you run into, the problem you run into when you decide you're going to work with Image you're gonna, or you're going to put your book under a banner is that they're supposed to, help you with marketing and distribution that's that's your deal and with image you sign a deal with them you know to be under their banner and they're supposed to help you just focus on the creative part and then they pimp it some companies will do that other companies won't get off their ass and do anything and now you're giving them a cut or paying them a fee every month and you're not getting anything in return you know so that's why I'm you know, with comicology, they seem to be out there. They tweet a lot, and they Facebook, and they're out there. You know, getting the word out and doing things. And and but I didn't know, so I wanted to ask guys that that 
you know. Yeah, they they have like all the different imprints, and they have um, a separate imprint uh, that's just for creator owned. It says creator owned on it. Okay. And and there's a ton of stuff on it. Yeah, I don't. I um, I, I got to be honest. I mean, I was. Uh, you know, I it's it's just seems the it's still definitely the logical, you know, progression of where comics are going is the tablet. I I've been lazy. Of getting into it because I I still like to put pencil on paper. I I have a Wacom tablet. I haven't used it in ten years because I'm just still an old school guy. But uh, you know it, it's I think it's it's I know I what is it they, I was reading somewhere like what twenty percent well, we're twenty percent or more of comics are are read on tablets now, you know, or online. I don't I don't you know my kids will probably you know won't give a shit. But hey, you know, <laughs> I can tell people when they ask yeah just 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 get it online. So, I don't know. It's I thought the internet was just for porn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> fuck do I know? I like, it's like you know, it's like we, we, the the internet is like a blessing and a curse because you look at the shit you got and what you're capable of, but it's also it could be just an incredible tool to waste your time if you want. So I try to just use it for certain things and then get the fuck off of it because uh, you turn around at three in the morning and you know you're looking at Marilyn Chambers. And it's just, <laughs> <laughs> fucking bro's been dead for twenty years. You know. <laughs> Tracy Lords or shit like that. Jamie, were you a Tracy Lords guy or no? I kind of came into uh, came into it right as she got busted for not being legal. Okay. So yeah, I have see. I've seen some of the pictures, but okay. but really none of the movies. Yeah, you know the the, the porn stars. That, you know when I was in when I was in grammar school when I was in high school the girls the, the ones they got now make the ones you know. When I was around, Jesus Christ, forget it. I mean, it was like you know they were, if it were they were they were good looking and they were shaven. When I was, you know, it, it was a miracle. Now, mm-hmm. fuck, I don't know where they find these broads. You know, they're driving around San Diego. You know, picking up Tiziano now. <laughs> I sure, <laughs> I sure, up. I sure hope not, because that's really depressing. Yeah, well, you know, Tiz is Tiz is one of those guys. He can't help himself. You know, he's a. Uh, He's the gray goose, you know. It's like the fucking guy looks like, you know, he looks like he looks like a, like a a, a, a reti- an old retired Captain Morgan is what he looks like, you know. <laughs> you know, but he, he listen, he's single and he's out there and he's a hairdresser, so I I gotta respect that. <laughs> okay. There's a lot there's a lot of trim in making homely dames beautiful. Let me tell you, you know, and, and he's so good at it. I don't know, you know what the fuck I would do. Are you, you know, getting, cut, are... cut cut and fuck two fifty with Tiziana. No, here in Toronto. <laughs> Are you going to be going up to uh, Fan Expo? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 a great show, and it's close in Toronto. It's a great city. It's it's like I said, man. It's just harder now because of the kids. It, mm-hmm. It's you know, I used to be able to just go. Now it's like fuck. It's like the the, the, the Normandy invasion when you got to go out of town. You know, who's going to pick up the kid on Friday? And then what are you going to do about Wednesday? And then. What about when your mother and it, it, it's just there's so much shit now that I, you know it's it, it's you know it's like putting together a fucking B seventeen. I so when they, there's cons and everybody's like, hey, just come and hang out. I'm like guys, you don't get it, do you? You know, I mean, when you got when you're married and you got you know a couple of kids, it's like your balls are in a jar. You can't just fucking pick up and go. <laughs> you, you know, you know what I mean? You've been bit by a vampire. There's nothing you can do. It's over. I'm like Len Talbot, where I wake up when I turn into a werewolf last night. My life is over, you know? I tore some guy's throat. I had to find a finger in my pocket and shit some morning. I don't know where I was yet the last. Only that for years. I don't know what I, where I've been the last four years. I don't know what the fuck I've been doing. You know, you wake up and you're, you know, you're 100 pounds overweight. And, you know, like I said, you're shitting tax and you don't know where you're at. You know, none of your clothes fit, and you know you find you, you look like your dad. You go, holy fuck, what happened to me? You know, you got to dye your hair, and your fucking teeth are falling out. It's fucked up. You know, it's, it's like I'm like Steve McQueen and Papillon. It's just it's all bad. <laughs> you know, it's like being a wolf man. That's what I'm like. You know, I, I wake up the next day I don't know where the fuck I am. You know? And they want to go to cons, and these are jagoffs that have nothing to do all day either. You know, so I know a lot of guys that they're at cons, and they're like, hey, Sal, we're at the cons, you know, and you're like, yeah? Well, what are you doing? We're up at, and they'll mention, like, this weekend was what, Heroes? Yeah, yeah. In Charlotte, okay? 
I don't know what to make of Charlotte. I've talked to people and they say it's a great con. I've talked to people and they say, eh, it's good for artists. I've talked to people and they, they say it's a waste of time. I don't know. But I got San Diego in two weeks, okay? And that is like, phew, that's like, holy, that's like fucking a 600-pound broad. That's, that's, that's a tough one. You know, that's, that's like fucking Moose Cholock. That is just one of those shows that you got to bring everything I got for that one. You know, that's like a Galactus three-issue story. You know, that's not you turn the page and it's just some guy who was robbing a bank. You know, that's one of those, oh, fuck. We got to go get the Celestials or some bullshit. That's San Diego. And I don't have the energy, the time, or, you know, the, the clear stool to do with fucking Charlotte. And, you know, next week there's, I don't know, Phoenix. And, you know, there's always some sick shit they come up with, like we're at a nightclub. You know, yeah, uh, hey, Sal, um, you know, uh, we're going up to fucking uh, Toledo next week because there's some... Um, there's this special Star Wars thing where you remember the broad that was green who was dancing? She's going to be there. And I'm like, yeah? The fuck does that got to do with me? I, I'm, I'm too busy here changing diapers and getting kicked in the balls. I don't have time for that bullshit. <laughs> oh. So I don't, I don't know. I, I literally, I'm like my mom now where I don't even know what day it is. You ever get that way, Jamie? Where you're like, well, what day is it today? Uh -huh. so, <laughs> oh, my yeah. mom will call me sometimes to see what time it is. I'll go, mom, what the fuck do I look like? What time is it? She'll go, is it five in the morning or is it five at night? I go, mom, you got to put the fucking gallo, the, the, you know, stop buying the wine and the jug. <laughs> you know, because it's, it's bad. You know, but Italy won yesterday, so to, you know she probably was drinking Zambuca. <laughs> Are your Eagles going to do anything, Jamie, or no? I don't know. It's 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 one of those years where I, I just I just don't know. It's it, it, they can they have the talent to do it, but will they put it together and will they stay healthy? And and uh, what happened to the Phillies? Oh, what hasn't happened? Hey. Well, come on, you know, listen, listen. Yeah. I got the I got the Cubs, guys. No, no. I was wondering. I got the Cubs. Okay. I was about the to Cubs say, don't like go. A, <clears throat> the Cubs couldn't beat my high school team. <laughs> now, we got Theo Epstein and all this bullshit they talked about, and it's like, oh, it's a rebuilding. What fucking rebuilding? We've been rebuilding for a hundred years. Don't give me <laughs> shit about rebuilding. You know, we got we got. You know, Jesse is our shortstop. <laughs> Give you an idea how fucked up it is. You know, Peter, Peter plays first base. You know, <laughs> on the you know, anybody who's Hispanic can play for the Cubs. Nobody else. That's it. And every year I hear about how great they're going to do. Come on, stop it. You know, cut it out. The only, the only thing that I can look forward to is that the White Sox suck equally. <laughs> that's all I. That's all I. That's all I got in my life. I don't. I got nothing else. You know. I was going to take my kid to the game, but, you know, I'm like, I don't know if he's at the right age. He's going to be five in July. So, you know, my wife ordered a cake, the, kid, the Nemo cake. It was like, you know, $65. I go, $65 for a cake, huh? I go, what the fuck? My father didn't spend $65 on my first 20 birthdays, you know? <laughs> and this kid's got a cake that costs $65, you know? Uh, Any of you guys got kids, or am I just like you know? No, you're no, you're my a, uncle you're Charlie a... on my three sons. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I know better. <laughs> now, pants, you seem like that fucking that's kind of a sleeper guy. You know, that guy that that you know walks around is real quiet, and then you turn around and you find out the whole time he's been the guy with the big dick who's been fucking everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth. Are you like Screech from from Saved by the Bell? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to find out. I'm going to find out one day. They're going to go, that motherfucker. Because it's always guys like like Jamie and like Pants. You know, it's never jagoffs like me with a big mouth. It's always those fucking guys where you find out, you know, you, you hold them down one day and you pull their pants down and there's a fucking tripod, you know, and then you find out, oh, no wonder. No wonder these guys were so fucking quiet and went all to those cons and talked a lot of shit. They're probably fucking Puerto Rican three at a time. That's why. <laughs> I'm very modest. I don't know about you, Jamie. That's why you still work at Toys R Us. Huh? You always got those hot broads at the checkout. You know, they want to know your phone number. Why the fuck do I need to give you my phone number when I buy a doll at Toys R Us? That's what I want to know. I'm sorry. I, I have nothing to do with that. Lots of lonely yeah, moms. I'm there the other day to buy like a, a pool for my kid. You know, those ones that in the, uh, in the backyard. Uh -huh. 
like 700 degrees in Chicago mm-hmm. this weekend. And they want to know my phone number. I'm like, what the fuck? What is this? What am I getting fitted for a tuxedo now? I got to give you my fucking <laughs> phone number? <laughs> yeah, I, I can't begin to justify all the things that we asked when we not, check are you, are you still? Are you still on, on, on speaking terms with Toys R Us pants? <laughs> yes, I am. Because the last time I talked to you, you said that they had your picture by the door. <laughs> And, and there was some bullshit you had to put up a display and told the guy to go fuck himself. And then, you know, there was a fight and you turned into, you know, it was like a fucking Van Damme movie where you knocked him into the action figures or some bullshit. No, we're, we're, we're all good. It's water under the bridge. Now, now, how does it work with those motorized cars? You know, those, those ones that, that the hillbillies buy for their kids. Uh-huh. They, can't, they don't have money for food, but they spend $600 on a Jeep for their shit. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. But no, but I mean, do those things really work, or is there a lot of bullshit? <laughs> no, they work. You know, you get about an hour's worth out of a charge, from what I is hear. Is that what it is? <laughs> and then what do you do? You got to plug it in? For or like 18 hours what? again. And <laughs> I mean, and how, and what, is there like a weight limit on those, or what? Um, Yeah, the single cars, wow, I actually know this stuff. The single cars, it can go up to 65 pounds. Uh, for the um, two-seaters, it's like 130 pounds, and those can go up to five miles per hour. So I'm out. <laughs> I can't buy one. <laughs> so, okay. Because, you know, some of the Jagos in my neighborhood, they thought they were trying to get around insurance, and they figured they'd get one of those. You know? <laughs> it's, not officially, it's not officially summer in Chicago until there's at least three Jagos driving down the expressway with a mattress tied to the fucking roof of their car. <laughs> you know? And I'm always amazed that they're shocked that it comes off. You know, you're like, you fuckers didn't take physics in high school, did you? You know, you're going to put a mattress... On the roof of your car and hold your, and then the world class jag offs hold it with their arm. You know, they got, while they're driving. God. Yeah, they got their arm out the window holding the mattress, and they're going 60 miles an hour on the expressway. Yep. And, and, and those are the guys that I want to talk to. <laughs> those, those are the types of guys that you really need to sit down and go, all right, you know, we need to have a special place to put you fucking assholes. <laughs> You really do. They usually do, which is public high schools, you know, where I live. <laughs> you know? But you guys, where you live, you, I've been there. you got you no shortage of jagoffs. So. <laughs> oh, no. So true. And now, how many of you guys are still on speaking terms at this point? <laughs> no, because you're like, you're like the fucking Temptations. You know, you've got, like, <laughs> so many different members now that come and go. I saw the Temptations once in Vegas, and it was a white guy. You know <laughs> That's how, then I go, no, no, listen, this is, now I know that this shit's fucking diluted, you know, when there's a white guy. But you guys, it's like, I can never keep track anymore, you know. You're like the legion of the substitute heroes at this point. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Jamie shows up, like, when he's, <laughs> when, like, the drive throughs open, he's like, you know what, I can, might be able to get a fucking, like, a bacon sandwich on the way. Pants shows up. <laughs> Pant shows up when he's on his way from the Bijou Theater, and it was an all-night, you know, Nicky Knockers festival that he's just coming from. Okay. Brian, Brian posts more shit on Facebook now like he's fucking Donald Trump. Every time he buys a house and puts, changes a doorknob, he's got to put it on fucking Facebook. All right? I changed the toilet seat. I washed my hands. You know, he's like Chris Roop, where every time they blow a fart, I got to hear about it on Facebook. You know? I ate a piece of candy. You know, I'm in the mood for toast. I love shit like that. I'm like, I care. Hey, you want toast. This is what I want to know. But Brian used to be a normal guy. I don't know what the fuck happened to him now. You know, since he got the house, he walks around like he's fucking Otto Preminger. I mean, he's got a big shot now. You know. He's got a cane, you know. <laughs> walks around with like a tape measure well what we're going to do out here is we're going to level all this and then we're going to create a new driveway with crushed stone and he's you know and he's showing pictures of the house and i'm going okay i don't give a shit you know i liked it before when you put pictures of like the dancing cat or some shit like that you know? <laughs> no. jamie he doesn't post at all he just clicks like and moves on you know that's it <laughs> He never, or he'll write some sick shit on my page all, all the time. You know, like, what a jag off, and then he moves on, you know. Well, yeah. Pants, I don't know if he gives a shit at all about Facebook. You know, he's too busy on, like, you know, Cougars.com or fucking Dolly Madison or, or, or he's a 
on Craigslist looking for all that sick shit Cambodians and all that other <laughs> sickness that goes on. Central American hookers, and, you know. Because that shit that went down with the CIA, Pants was involved, trust me. <laughs> Pants, Pants has got caught arguing outside of Toys R Us because a fucking hooker said, listen, I told you I need the three limited edition stormtroopers, you know, and the TIE fighter if you want to reach around in a three-finger magilla. Otherwise, forget it. So Pants got caught trying to hold out the TIE fighter, you know. <laughs> It wasn't gonna. It wasn't gonna work. Uh, you know, he wanted to give her a, a Roman helmet, and she's like, "No, I don't, I don't play that shit." <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm. I'm not into that pants. You know. <sighs> so either give me my Boba Fett cookie jar, or leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> and that's when the manager called security. Because well. uh, <laughs> every Facebook. time I see pants, he's always got that look on his face, like, "What? I didn't do anything." <laughs> always. Uh. <laughs> I question whether I should have gotten on Facebook in the first place. <laughs> now, does any now, does anybody else know you guys called me, or is this all just like you, you, you're not recording it and you're humoring me like I'm that crazy old guy <laughs> that howls at the moon? <laughs> is this, I mean, does anybody uh, did the other guys run out of there when they knew you were calling me, or what? Well, of course, you know Brian has his house. He, he's got to be at his house. Yeah, what the fuck does that mean? He's got a house. What is the only guy that has a house? Well, oh, where, where does he live? In the wilderness, where he's afraid Indians are going to fucking attack and burn it down, or what the fuck? No, he, he lives. He lives closer to well, Philadelphia listen, now. Listen, you tell him for me that uh-huh. he's a jag off. Okay. Because he knew I was. How long do I know that fucking guy? Okay. For like six when he years. Was living, I knew him when he was living in his fucking parents' basement, and he had the, he, he hid it from everybody that he got his wife knocked up. You know, he was talking all that bullshit, like, I don't know what happened. You know, we went swimming, and she got pregnant. It wasn't my fault. You know, we were at the drive-in, and it was a, it was a Lou Diamond Phillips movie, so something had to happen. Now, all of a sudden, he's fucking Donald Trump, and he's the guy on HGTV, the gay guy who puts the curtains up. Because I see his Facebook posts where I'm like, who the fuck is this guy kidding? So, we're gonna, here's where we're going to put the helipad right here. <laughs> and then down here we're doing the uh, slide, you know, where we're going to put that. And then we're going to put new teak porches, but we're going to strip for – and I'm thinking, who the fuck is this guy kidding? <laughs> when does this guy work? Because when, I, when you buy a house, let me tell you something, unless you're one of those fucking guys that's retired – or you're two gay guys and you got no kids and you got all kinds of time on your hand. I ain't got time to strip woodwork. I tell my wife, I go, I don't have time for all that shit. You know, I mean, going to Home Depot and changing nails and all that fucking nonsense. Houses are endless amounts of work, trust me, endless. I mean, no matter, every time I turn around, some shit breaks in this house, I swear to you. And it's never that shit where you find money in the wall and <laughs> fucking happens to me. I don't know who the fuck these people are. <laughs> You know, to find shit in the wall, you know. Every time a faucet leaks, my kid, you know, my kid will fill a bathtub up to the top and then jump in. And I'm sitting in the kitchen and water's fucking coming out of the light fixture one time. <laughs> I'm sitting here and it's like, the fuck, it's just, it's just dripping. I look up and there's water coming out of the light fixture. So then, you know you've been married more than three years because it used to be when I'd call my wife, it was yes or it was honey. Now you get, what? <laughs> when you call your wife. And I'm like, what in the fuck is going on upstairs? You know, and it's always like, it's like the scene where Leonardo DiCaprio's handcuffed at a pipe in Titanic, <laughs> where you go up there and the water is coming out of the fucking window. And I'm going, listen, I don't really give a shit because nobody listens to me around here anyway. You know, I don't know. I'm like, a, like fucking Doctor Strange when he's got his mouth covered with that thing and nobody can see him. That's me. You know, and, and but like every time I turn around, some shit's broken, and then I'm the guy that's got to fix. Then, then I'm everybody's pal. When I got to deal with the drywall guy or or some bullshit. The, the other day, the garage door wasn't working. He wasn't working, and you would have thought fucking Pearl Harbor got in, you know invaded again. Because <laughs> I had to call some, <laughs> the fucking guy to come out for the you know because to open the garage door. Just open the fucking door. How hard is it? I mean, this is not like rocket science. Yeah, but, you know, I got to get out of the car. Oh, well, <laughs> Zsa Zsa Gabor's got to get out of the car. <laughs> you know how the fuck. I'm, all of a sudden, I'm married to the Kardashians. Nobody can get out of the fucking car and open the door. <laughs> you know? I used to, went my old neighbor, I used to live every morning, was a Puerto Rican sleeping in my car. Every fucking morning, I'd go out there. I'm like, guys, you got to go. Got to go. 
Yeah, take the taco bags with you. You got to get out of here. Sorry. <laughs> now it's it's the suburbs where you know people go to die. <laughs> you know, and you see those movies where you got the hot neighbors. Not nah, trust me. I don't know where the fuck those are, but it's not you know anywhere where I live. You know. Besides, I'm the old fucking guinea that the kids stay away from anyway. No, don't talk to that guy because he's the weird guy who does comics. <laughs> I'm that guy now. When you see me, when you see me cutting my lawn, you know, and I, oh, he smokes. You know, if I got a cigar, <laughs> I swear to God, you'd think I was out there with a crack pipe when you're out there smoking <laughs> a cigar. You know, like their kids are going to get sick because we're outside. You know, and so I purposely now smoke cigars when I cut the grass. You know, just to piss my wife. I don't know if it's a good idea to do that. Listen. I'm out here cutting the grass, which gives me warrant to do anything. Now, if I was out here naked, then it'd be a different story, <laughs> you know. But at my age, my nuts would probably get caught in a lawnmower because just everything's fucking sagging and dragging, and and you don't recognize anything anymore. You know, and you're at the age now where you go to the doctor and they do nothing for you. You know, when you're really old or you're really young, <laughs> they got all the answers. I'm at the age where he shrugs his shoulders. I go, look, when I shit, it looks like a candy cane. What's wrong? <laughs> eh. Drink more water, Sal. Drink more water? You know, it costs like $300 for the guy to go, yeah, drink more water, Sal. Or, or, uh, or you get the, the, well, it's just a part of getting old. Yeah. No, uh, no, they shrug yeah. their shoulders. They go, eh, Sal. <sighs> they give you the, the, the sigh. Yeah. <sighs> uh, have we checked you for sleep apnea? Now you're like at the car dealer. They start all kinds of shit. Sleep apnea, air plugs, you should have that tooth fixed. I'm going, hey, 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 guys, I'm not a fucking 62 El Camino. I'm like, I came here because it hurts when I shit. What does that mean? Well, uh... Have you had more... your prostate checked? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want you, the guy goes, yeah, I have my prostate checked, and, you, you know, the guy jams his finger up your ass, and I go, well, there's part of the reason why I shit candy canes, is you jam three fingers up my ass, okay? And then he's talking on the phone while he's got, he's got his hand in your ass, and you're going, buddy, what are you going to pull out of my ass? Like like a fucking bou- uh, a bouquet of roses, and there's a card on it, and it says asshole. Ate I go, I don't eat anything anymore. I can't eat what I used to eat. Used to be able to eat everything, you know, peanuts and all kinds of pork rinds with tobacco, all kinds of sick shit. Now my diet is like I'm like a four year old. I mean, you gotta, you can't eat anything. So you go to the doctor. And my wife's like, oh, you got to go for your checkup. I'm like, Pfft. listen, I go for my checkup. You know what they tell me? You're fat. That's it. I go bye. They look at my chart. They go, Sal, you really need to lose weight. Okay, sixty five dollars. Thank you. They look into your heart. They look in your ears. What are they going to see in my ears? What, wax? And and I'm like, okay. I get everything checked. They check the prostate, and it's like they're, look, they're trying to get the last pickle out of the jar when they check the prostate. <laughs> he lifts you up off the table by your ass, you know. He jams three fingers and lifts you off the table. And I'm going... I didn't even know what my prostate was before. I know now I got to get up in the middle of the night and piss all the time. You know, that's a constant. You know, where you piss and you hit the wall. And my <laughs> wife the next day, were you in there? I go, Don't look at me. It was probably the kid. <laughs> you know, in the middle of the night, I don't look where I piss. You hit the wall. You piss on the toilet paper. You go, eh, it'll soak it off. Don't worry about it. We need the grout in here anyway. I'm not worried about it. You know, fuck the wino. <laughs> You step in cat puke, or I step on a fucking uh, on the horse from Monopoly, you know, or or some sick shit. There's laying on the floor my my daughter's dolls or some shit. And then you know when you see those Barbie dolls at three in the morning in the dark, that shit scares the fuck out of you. That's like a Stephen King movie around here, because the toys got the motion sensors now to get the kids to play with them. Okay, so you walk by, and all of a sudden the toy starts talking to you, and you go, "What the fuck?" I told, I told my wife, I go, whatever happened to the Kung Fu grip and the life like here and, and, the, and with the bald spot? What the fuck ever happened to that? Now I got all this other shit, and everybody with kids tries to give you their kids' toys. You know, my wife comes back from garage sales. Look what I got. I'm like, yeah, okay. Those, that red car, you know, with the yellow roof or whatever. 
There's only one of those that just keeps getting passed around. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> There's only one of those because they never. It's indestructible. That fucking car. You could bury that thing, and, and a thousand years with Terminators will find that fucking red car because the kids never use it, and it's been in my yard, and I've given it away, and people bring it back. You know, you put it in the alley, and people put it back in my fucking yard. <laughs> So I don't I don't want any more kids' toys and I don't want any more hand me down clothes. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I I can't fucking take any more of this shit. Pampers are seventy five dollars for a box. You know, it's cheaper to shit in your pants around here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry guys, you know. <laughs> take my daughter through the car wash or the pants down and say here. Because <laughs> <clean her off." laughs> oh. oh. Cause I'm like, I'm one of them guys where I reach the point where I'm like, I ain't, I ain't I'm not changing any more diapers. I'm, I'm, I'm done. You know, I, I was happy with one kid. My wife. See, women. Let me tell you a cruel secret. Women will not stop till they get a daughter. They won't tell yeah. you that. <laughs> you know, they give you the old, oh, whatever we have. Yeah. Okay. They want the daughter. You know. They. So thankfully, the second kid was, you know, and I was only in it for the sex anyway. But the second kid, <laughs> it always. Thank God was a daughter, you know, because when they're trying, when they when they're and they got that plan, you know, they got the calendar, you know, with the eggs and all the bullshit. When they're on that plan, holy fuck! I mean, it's like literally, it's scary how manipulative they are. Like, you know, they'll they'll just walk right up to you and stick their ass in your face and go, "Here, come on, let's go." <laughs> now, now I got now it's like high school. You got to get her drunk. <laughs> you got to. You gotta put a roofie, you know, oh, in her fucking Cheerios, you know. <laughs> you know, after you've got a couple of kids, you don't have enough fucking strength to eat, you know. At the end of the day, you know, by the end of the day, I'm like, I, I'm like, well, I'm going to bed, and you look at it's like eight thirty because you're so fucking tired. So now it's got to be one of those things where you wake up and somebody's fucking you because I don't know what's going on anymore. Uh, honestly, after you've been married a while with kids, they just you're they beat it out of you. You nothing left. You're that little golfing pencil, it's the stub. You know, you just gotta kind of sharpen it with a fucking butter knife and just scratch it. That's what's left to me. That's all I got, guys. Well, you've you know. convinced me. I'm gonna go out and get married now and have kids. No, and then you, you know, you, you're like, <laughs> and then your underwear are always fucked up in your forties. You go, what the fuck happened to my underwear? You know, you, you you get like these crazy like shit stains that you never had when you were three years old. You know. Where you go, my God, did I not wipe my ass or what's going on? It looks like tax, you know, when you when you when you go to take shit. Because I like I said, I it's one of the few things I have left in life, right, Jamie, is to just go take a shit. Yes. I, and not I'd be agree. fucked with. And not be fucked with. Mm -hmm. A good magazine, you know, you know, newspaper, eh, not bad. You do magazine and just just not be fucked with. That's all I want. You know, I'm not, I don't want to be black bolt or anything like that. I just want to, you know, just take a shit in peace. But, but to my horror, my older sister told me that she listens to your guys' shows when I'm on. And, and, yeah, and I was just like horror. I was mortified because my older sister's the nicest, <laughs> most clean cut, wholesome, sweetest, dearest person in the world. And she hears me on it. She must think, my God. What happened to my jagoff brother? He became a serial killer. You know, <laughs> my brother when he's on Geek Speak, it's like an episode of The Wire. You know, I find out that he's he's a monster to his own people. You know, <laughs> and then after I hang up, my wife she she's in the other room. She's like, "You did it again, didn't you?" I go, "What?" You were supposed to talk about your work, and you were talking about shitting and cocks, <laughs> and and I heard you. And you made fun of you made fun of pants and Jamie again. <laughs> and I go, I, I go, I go, Karen. Those those guys don't like me anyway. So I'm like, what, what, what am I gonna do? Jamie, Jamie's just waiting for the next. Jamie's just trying to get strong enough and well enough to beat my ass. That's his goal. <laughs> You know, he's like, it's like, that's that's what he, that's his motivation. He's like, I just want to kick Sal's ass. That's all I want to do. <laughs> and it's not hard to do at this point. You know, throw a piece of bacon down. I bend over to pick it up. Kick me in the ass. <laughs> I think I'll just hit you in the balls. You, you <laughs> or hit me in the balls because he walks around with that fucking cane and he scares people with that cane. Actually, not anymore. No? 
No, you, I, you you were like the boys from Brazil the last time I saw yeah. you were walking around. Oh, oh yeah, look, look like Gregory Peck. And I go, oh fuck, here comes Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Now, do you guys talk to Peter anymore, or is it kind of like you know, he's like the old Darren on Bewitched now? <laughs> well, no, I, I email every now and then about some things, and uh, he was just. Uh, I guess you talked to him about no, you saw some of his stuff from uh, Denver. Oh, yeah, right. I mean, I saw, I saw some of his tweets and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the last time I got a chance to talk to him was uh, October of last year. Uh, we He had a birthday party that we got all got invited to. Yep, and he came to play cards at Matt's house. Uh, I guess it was Thanksgiving weekend. Were you there for that? I was there the one time he came to play cards, yeah. Yeah, because he came for a little bit and then he left. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just his... Don't, his... don't listen, don't listen, don't lie to me. I know you <laughs> You know, you guys talk out of your ass. Are you guys really friends, or is it just a lot of bullshit? It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. Because I got friends that are like that. Hey! But, you know, as they walk away, you're like, I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> you know, because, you know, the thing, you move on with your life. Things change. But some people you stay civilized with. There's a lot of guys in comics that I know, but there's maybe half a dozen that I would consider, you know, like, like friend friends. You know, like if the shit was the shit at the fan... You know, when I got to go into witness protection and they find out, you know, that I'm in a state that starts with a C or a U, you know, those are the guys I can call. But the rest of them, it's just a lot of bullshit. You know, it's like, hey, how you doing? You know, and that's, that's unfortunately what happens as you get older. You know, a lot of my friends from college, even good friends of mine, you know, it, it, it sucks, man. And people, you know, you get families, you get your new jobs, you move away, your life gets complicated. It's amazing how some of your closest friends, so my closest friends growing up, I, 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 you don't even talk to them anymore. It's like when you when you get married and you got families and everybody's got shit, you move on and, and you know. Yeah, I mean, becomes... that, that, that's definitely what it is. I mean, it's just one of those, his life went one way, ours was, you know, here. And, you know, I'll talk to him when I see him and we'll, you know, get together, we'll laugh, we'll do some, right. you know, dumb shit, but... But yeah, it was definitely a, a, a point where it just we we kind of grew apart. Nothing, nothing, you know, nothing bad. It was just that, like you said, shit happens. How how often do you guys do the show now? Like like three a day, or is it still or no? Um, well, we do morning and afternoon, and you guys are doing a lot of shows, man. Well, we we've cut back in the last year or so. We usually do about three <laughs> three a week, the three a week. Oh, okay. And this one will be on when? Christmas? This one will also be on Thursday. Okay, because that's how it always is with you guys. Sal, this one's coming on a week from next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> will you shut the hell up? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because people ask me, they're like, oh, when are you going to go out to the I go, guys, it's not my fucking show. You know, I don't just, call, you know, be, and I don't want to be a whore and say, hey, you know, this time I said, let's get together and talk pre San Diego, because then we could, because trust me, every year, they fuck me over at San Diego. It's just inevitable that some shit has to happen at San Diego. This this spring, I did a couple shows that I was excited to do because, you know, Emerald I, I like because I like Jim. Jim's a great guy, even though I talked shit about him. Uh, Calgary was, I was very flattered that they invited me, and it was, you know, nice. All the shows in Canada from my money are great. I think that Vancouver show is going to be a monster that the Fan Expo guys are doing. But I said, you know, let me talk to these guys because, and I forgot about C2E2 because it's a home show, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't know, I don't know. C2E2 is kind of a weird show. I don't, I don't know how they, how Reed feels about it. I don't know if it's gonna, if it's got legs, and I'm sure they're not gonna pull the plug on it yet. But I, I don't, I don't know about C2E2. I mean, New York. To be honest with you, the only show that I don't, I don't look forward to is New York. That show has become just a just a fuck. It has just become an ass-kicking show in terms of how much work is involved. It's so crowded, and it's such a monster that um, I dread it. You know, I got another one of those falls coming where I got um, I got I got Fan Expo in August, which is you know that's a good time because it's his show, and, and it's always you know he puts me in between two fucking guys that don't speak English and a, and a Johnny Quest villain, and then I. To, uh, but we got another we got another exhibition this year for Alex at the Norman Rockwell Museum. Oh. So I got yeah. So I got Italy, and then two days after I'm back from Italy, I got the Norman Rockwell Museum. 
And then I got New York. And oh. it's like, I got to be honest, man, New York, it's just so, it's like San Diego only in like a quarter of the space. It's over 100,000 people, but the Javits Center is like having it in your high school auditorium. That place, <laughs> that place is a shithole. And it's crowded, and you can't get a cab, and you can't take a piss. I had to go piss in the toll lot last year. It was so bad. I'm not kidding. No, I know he did. the street where they, where they didn't pound the cars. We talked about that, like, yeah. I took a shit in an 80-gallon oil drum right there. I just said, yeah, I, don't give, I don't care. <laughs> and, and there's nowhere to get any food. And logistically, and I told Reed, I go, guys. It, this is exciting because you've got an interesting dynamic now with what happened with, with Comic-Con. You've got a lot of people that, that did a lot of exhibitors and a lot of TV and, and movie people that, and gaming people that, that have fall agendas. they got new launches for shit they, that's coming out in the fall, whether it's a game, a movie, or a TV show. They discovered through, through their marketing geniuses that... The, that they don't get enough bang for their buck at Comic Con because it's summer, and then people forget by the fall what they were pimping in July. So they're jumping on New York now, and as bad as it was last year, it's going to be worse this year because they're expanding it. They're opening up to more gaming and more, you know, Fox Television and Nickelodeon and all the rest of that oh, shit. Oh God! Yeah, and as bad as it was this year, and it was bad. Oh yeah. I mean, and I mean bad. Oh, yeah, we talked about oh, it. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, yep. it was – and I mean logistically bad where I had clients that are like, Sal, I, 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 you can't do it because the aisles were so crowded. You couldn't move. You know, you couldn't use the bathroom. You couldn't get food. You couldn't get a cab. You know, it's over on the side of the island. It's hard to – that. but I got to do it, you know, because it's it's one of the bigger shows. But, man, oh, man, I'm not looking forward to it because I know how much work is involved. You know, I don't get back to the hotel at fucking 11 o'clock. You're eating dinner at 11 o'clock. You know, I'm eating, you know, pork rinds in the elevator at fucking 11.30. <laughs> you know. But so for me, I lose my summer, you know, because of the sh all the shows. And But but this year, you know, I told my wife, maybe we'll take a vacation in December. You know, maybe take the kids to Disney World or, you know, you know get lost and wait for and leave them there and wait for Lost and Found to call me on the intercom. <laughs> and say, Got a kid, Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> I'm like, ah, he'll be safe. <laughs> about him. Leave him in the boat, give him a couple dollars, Snickers. What the fuck's going to happen to him? I'll see him on one of those commercials, you know, where the kids are left someplace. I don't know. So I, I just said, yeah, maybe we'll go in December. But he's five. I don't know if he's going to remember anything. You know, I don't know if it's – I could just lie to him and say, yeah, we took you to Disney World. Because now i got to be fucking Billy Zane. i got to bring my mother-in-law. I'm like, I'm in the Titanic. i got to bring my mother-in-law to watch the baby. You know? And my wife brings two steamer trunks to go to Disney World. You know? I'm like, what the fuck do I need? You know? I'm the old guinea with the sandals and the remote in the pocket and the big, short, you know, the big shorts you know, to fit shit and uh, you know, the cutoff T-shirt and the, the, you know, the floppy hat. You know, that's me. So I think we might do the Disneyland thing then you know this December. But I don't want to think about winter time right now. <laughs> it's supposed to be ninety seven here tomorrow. So. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we had that about a week ago. It was like that that hot out there. Yeah. You guys are still in still in Reading, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and how's that going? Uh, it's okay. <laughs> now, now now Reading is where Al's grill was in happy days, right? <laughs> That's what it remind. That, that's what it reminded me of when I was a Reading <laughs> show. It was like all these fucking diners is what I remembered about Reading. You know, where, where everything's stainless steel and the, the waitresses, you know, chew gum and slap you on the ass when you leave and that kind of thing. Mm. You know. Well, what happened last year? Weren't we named like the poorest city in America? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was just yeah. recently. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, well, that's why. That's why Brian bought his house. You know, <laughs> out of, out of Reading. Yes. 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 Yeah. Is he in Reading? He's no. out of Reading. Oh, he's closer to Philadelphia now. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. how far is he away from you guys right uh, now? About 45 minutes. Like, if yeah. you were going to go kick his ass, how long would it take? <laughs> uh, about 45 minutes to yeah, an hour. about 45 minutes. Really? Yeah. So he drives it. But, so now he never drove 45 minutes to an hour before, but now he does. Well, See not, what kind of a jag off friend you got? He moves 45 minutes well, away. What kind of shit is that? He, well, because he got a job in Delaware. What's he doing in Delaware now? <laughs> he's working for Chase Bank. See another fucking sellout. You know, he was he was the man. I remember when you don't want to work for the man, and it was all that anti. It was all that Fight Club bullshit. You know, ah, yes, and you know, we don't tell anybody about Fight Club. And he was, you know, he thought he was, you know, 
anti-establishment, and then he was the guy sleeping in fucking Central Park, you know, I'm the 99%, and now he's working at Chase. <laughs> they made him an offer he couldn't refuse. Yeah, but he was the guy with the V for Vendetta mask, I thought. <laughs> what happened to the fucking guy? He sold out. <laughs> fucking asshole. You know, <laughs> you think you know some people. You know? Everybody has their price. That's right. I, hey, look, I, I was the guy who would never move out of Chicago, and then when you get married, it's just a sea of compromise. You know, what are you going to do? You know, you're like... They put the light over you long enough and sweat you. You know, my wife got the DNA off the Coke can, you know, <laughs> they gave me while they were questioning me. So, so either we move out to, well, well it's, the, it's the schools. I was like, what, what fucking schools? We, were still, we're, we weren't even married yet. She's worried about the school district. See, that's, that's how women think. They're that fucking five-level chess set in Star Trek. That's the fucking level they work at. You know, we're, we're, the, we're the chicken that plays tic-tac-toe. Women are that fucking chess set. When she said that, I should have ran. I should have said, let me get the fuck out of here. This is the infinity gauntlet. I need to get the fuck out of here now. This is fucked up. You know, Up is down and down is up. Ketchup is mustard. Because this is bullshit. <laughs> School district? I was like, what? The fuck are you talking about? I, still, I used to have my Saturdays free in those days, you know. Now, I, every Saturday morning, now, I don't know, I get, I get fucking hit in the head with a Tonka truck, and I got to watch, you know, fucking Elmo at 6.30. 6.30, you think these kids sleep in? 6.30. I, I, I told my wife, I go, I got to get my kid like a fucking milk route or something, you know, because he's up at 6.30. <laughs> you know, delivering papers or some bullshit, because, you know, why the fuck does he got to wake me up at 5.45? Even the birds outside are like, what the fuck is this kid doing? <laughs> Like, what is this shit? Oh, yeah, my sister tells me, my two-year-old nephew, that's 6.30. It's like, you know, up. Yeah. My sister yells, up. Yeah. And then... No, no, and they don't, and they don't, it sounds, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like the DEA is kicking in your front door because you're like fucking, you know, you're, you're, you're a meth lab or something. <laughs> that's what it sounds like when my kids get up in the morning. They kick the door open, the door hit, and the door opens and bangs against the wall. They run down the stairs, they knock shit over, they scream, then they fight over the remote. You know, it, it's just one of those things where it's like, Jesus Christ, this is just like, and I'm just going, what the fuck? You know, it, it's like the abomination in the Hulk or in the living room going at it, and I'm upstairs going, oh, fuck, they're not going to remember any of this shit. Let them beat the shit out of each other. I don't care. It teaches character. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, my dad used to just, you know, break a branch off a tree or back, you know, back into us with the car or something when we got out of there. <laughs> now you can't say shit. <laughs> my mom, my mom would break out the, you know, like the, you know, those those rubber jump ropes my sister had. She'd break that fucking thing out, and man, you ran your ass off. <laughs> you know, it was, it was like, you know, what it was like? It was like that gun that he had. They had in Jaws where they shoot you in the ass, and there's a barrel attached to it. That's the kind of shit my mom would do. You know, I just told my, I just told my wife, I go, listen, because my mom's still like, we'll go over there over the weekend, and when my kids run around, my mom will say, hey, what do you want me to do, beat the shit out of you? You know, and my, my wife laughs, I go, that's, that's the old school way, man. That's how those, the old timers think, you know. You can't do that shit anymore. Now they tell their teacher, you know, and then the, the Japanese lady calls me in her office, and, you know, and all of a sudden I'm with Blofeld from Live and Let Die, <laughs> And they're telling me, that I, with the guy with the cat is, is asking me about my kid. You know? The scar, the guy from Halloween is going, hey, listen, uh, did you threaten your son? And I'm like, can I get the fuck out of here, please? I gave you the tuition check, didn't I? Can I go? Because that's all they ever want is the tuition check. Uh, yeah, Sal, um, I wanted to talk to you about Anthony. I go, I, I, I sent the money. <laughs> okay, no, Anthony's doing great. He's doing fine. I go, yeah, that's what I figured. It was about the money, right? Oh, my Lord. No, oh, Sal. So. Guys, I, I, don't, I don't know how many, how many people are going to call me a jag off on the, on the forum, but <laughs> it's probably a good amount. <laughs> I, but, I, but it's only a jag off in the loving That's way. correct. Yeah, I get guys that go, you know, I, I love the guys that kind of go, you, you seem like a much bigger jag off when you're on that show you don't see where <laughs> like they expect me when i'm sitting at cons to be standing there and like you know mm -hmm. popping pimples on my ass or something or, or you know <laughs> shitting in a, in a coffee can while i'm at the con you know I, i'm like guys i go on i go on 
CGS because because it's like it's therapy. It is therapy, I'm, and the check would be in the mail, right? Anybody, uh, <laughs> I don't talk to anybody. I'm actually a very shy person. As you, can tell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like Rorschach. You know, I, I don't talk hmm. to anybody. I throw hot oil on fuckers once in a while, but that's <laughs> about it. So now, what are you guys going to line up for the rest of the summer? Enough about me. Let's talk about you. Ooh, well, uh, I guess I'll, I'll be in San Diego in a couple of weeks. You're going to San Diego. When are you leaving? Like tomorrow? <laughs> oh, I leave. Actually, leave that Wednesday morning. Okay, and you're staying what till Wednesday night, or you're going to no, be there I'm, the whole time? I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm leaving the following Monday morning. And Jamie, what's your story? Uh, as far he's as like, he's, he's like he's, he was asleep. He's like, he's like oh, uh, fuck! He woke me up. He talked to me. Uh, probably Baltimore and New York will be the two I'll try to go to. I, I I can't do a lot of traveling, and it's one of those are two of the shows that I can drive to and drive back like in a day. I New haven't New York. I haven't I'll probably done Baltimore be in a while. I, I I used to do Baltimore, but I haven't I haven't done it in a while. I don't know. Yeah, I used to like to go down there and walk around and just, you know, see people. And it's usually a nice show. I mean, they usually have a nice amount of vendors, and they can they get some nice talent. And you see Buzz down there every once in a while. It's usually the time I get to see him and some other yeah, he people. Was at, he was at Charlotte this weekend, and he did, uh, he did the one in San Jose. Yeah, I know. He 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 does a lot that I don't get to, so. <laughs> yeah, well, he's, those, those fucking yellow guys, they only let him do certain ones, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I usually let him into Baltimore and New York for sure. Yeah. Now, now the, the, are the rest of you guys talking to me, or nobody's talking? Yeah, <laughs> no, I can't afford I, it. I'm sure I offended everybody else in the room. You know, <laughs> Jamie and Pants got to be nice to me because I, because you know, I actually can chase them. So. <laughs> I I worked for PennDOT for two summers in college. Nothing offends me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you work? The Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. Every other word is either uh, cum or cunt. Oh, really? So, oh, yeah. Well, that's not always bad. So, so now you're so now you're comparing me to the to those guys. <laughs> oh no, you're is? you're tame. <laughs> is that what that's about? So now I've I've been I've been reduced to a racial stereotype. Is that what? You're <laughs> now, do you do shows with these guys or no? Uh, no, I can't afford it. <laughs> well, if you wouldn't call everybody a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you piss people off enough, you know. But aren't you those guys that are always like they catch the guy with like like three hundred thousand dollars worth of quarters under his bed and shit because he's been embezzling, you know, in the transfer booth all the time? Isn't that how it works? They caught some fucking Pollock over here that worked for the CTA stealing money like a quarter at a time, and they found like half a million dollars in quarters in his house. Jesus <laughs> believe Christ. these fucking guy, you know. And and the thing that kills me is like you go through all that trouble. Couldn't you, like, cash it in at some point? <laughs> he, he's got, like, bags and bags of money in this guy's house, all in quarters. Oh, my God. Yeah, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, what a fucking sad existence because he was a you know, single guy. And I don't know if they, they finally got him when they smelled the body or what happened. You know? <laughs> it was like seven, you know, when they went in there and it was the fat guy dead at the table. Or what the fuck is going on, you know? But, you know... I don't know if he called everybody a cunt, but, you know, Jamie used to do that. But then he, when he started working at uh, Victoria's Secret as the host, he had to give that up. <laughs> Jamie was real good at it. He'd be the guy, when, you know, when you walked in, he greeted you. He was the greeter. Hi, ladies. How are you? The, the panty section is over here, and then we have the bullet bras in the center, and our special today is, uh, you know, sequined underwear. But Jamie and I had a long talk, and you know, he had to give up some of yeah. his hobby. Oh. <laughs> I know. You, you said Jamie, now. Jamie kills me. Jamie kills me because he's always real nice to me on Facebook. But I, I, I got a feeling deep down he's like, he really is a fucking prick, Sal, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, I would love to hear what you guys say when I hang up other than like, oh, fuck. Can you believe he finally shut his fucking mouth? <laughs> right. uh, it's all good. Because Jamie right now, all he's thinking is, I got to go to the bathroom. Why didn't he shut up? <laughs> You're a mind reader. It's crazy. I've had, I've had the shit. I've had a turtle sticking its head out of my ass for about a half an hour. When is he going to shut up? <laughs> I shouldn't have eaten that goulash, you know, and that whole bag of kale chips when I was on my way here. Just you know, kidding. when I stopped at the truck stop, 
Just, it just keeps prairie dogging and then goes back in. Yeah, I should have had that bag of that bag of Funyuns is really fucking calling my name right now, you know. Why? And the last time I farted, it was just like it just was like a paintbrush on my ass. It's really bad, you know. Because <laughs> so you know, I can't handle hot jardinier anymore. I used to put hot jardinier on everything. I used to put it in my fucking cereal, and now. <laughs> You use hot jardinier, it's like the next day. Holy shit. I mean, I'm in a lot of trouble. I mean, it's like, I'm telling you, I'm howling at the moon when I eat hot jardinier. It just doesn't work anymore. <laughs> yeah, life is cruel that way. You know, everything's got to be, oh, you know, eat more fruit, Sal. Eh, fruit isn't any fun. The fuck wants to eat fruit? Yeah. <laughs> My sister's a vegetarian. She's always talking up all the benefits of, you know, but see, not me. You know, it's like um, if you can't hit, it, you can't kill it with a sledgehammer. I don't want to eat it. You know? <laughs> it's just not worth it. The fuck do I know? So now, what guest is on after me? Who do you got on after me? It's like Sister Teresa or something <laughs> like that. Or... We're, we're just waiting to go home right now. So... <laughs> Are you really? So right now, you guys got your coats on and your keys in your <laughs> That's hands. That's right. <laughs> shit like that. Jamie's got the car started. <laughs> He's like, just, just tell him I'm still here. He won't even know. <laughs> no, no, he, no, just, just, just mum, just, just like mumble if he if he says my name. That kind of shit. Because <laughs> uh, I thought Jamie was the only guy that, uh, over there that liked me, and now I'm finding out something different. You know, <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm like fucking electro. Nobody likes me. I'll tell you what, Sal. I'll bring you a bacon sandwich at Comic-Con. How's that? Uh, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> fucking around. I'm just, you know, I'm just, it's too bad you guys, more you guys can't make it out to Comic-Con. You know, because, uh, Jamie, you've been out there before, right, or no? Oh, yeah, no. I was out at least three, 2008, years ago, 2006. Right? Yeah, at least two or three times. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I'd, yeah lo- I, I'd love to go. It's just a matter of time and money. Time and money, yeah. freaking medical bills and all that kind yeah, of shit. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's like I, I mean, I, I to me, it's all work. But I don't know if, if you know, if I would go every year anyway, if it was one of those deals. You yeah. Because I had to cut a lot of shows because you just too damn many of them now. And yeah. it would, like you said, money wise, a lot of them, you know, they just weren't doing them all. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know guys that do every show, and I just don't know how the fuck they do it. No. Yeah. Anytime you want to hire me to work at the booth, I'll be more than happy to go out. <laughs> yeah, but you be kick people's asses. See, pants he steals, so you got to worry about. Well, it. yeah, that's that goes without saying. Original yeah, artwork. You, is... your problem is you can't keep you can't keep your mind on your work. You're always hitting on broads. And, yeah, you know, yeah, because that, that, that you give them that whole you know, that, you know I, I I still do the trick with the horse. You tell them that shit. And, you know. <laughs> Pants brings up the baby brownie with the camera. He wants to do the whole, you know, brings the water bottles and all that bullshit. You know? and, yeah. Oh my goodness! So, well, gentlemen, listen. I don't. I don't know why you let me on, but <laughs> you know. neither do we. I'm really beginning to wonder. Yeah, is it, it's one of those things like you know your, your city sticker. You know, every year you're like, ah, oh, fuck, I gotta <laughs> replace this fucking thing. Yeah. Well, we'll see you six months again for a checkup. Yeah, but listen, anybody who's at you know at Comic Con and wants to come and fuck with me, I'm same booth every year, right across from Marvel, twenty four nineteen, twenty four nineteen. Yeah, or they could you know they could see me on Facebook or you know MercuryComics dot com. And uh, but the, I I try to post as much stuff as but I haven't been posting as much sketch of the day stuff because I've been working on <clears throat> I've been working on pages. So cool. Well, that's that's good. To, I'm I'm glad to hear that because I used to love seeing the the sketch a day. So I'm I'm glad to hear you're working on. You're definitely still drawing and you're you're working on something else. Yeah, well, you know, the sketch of the day was <clears throat> was is nice when I just don't have the time to sit down and focus on stuff because of the kids and things like that. But in between shows now, I try to, uh, you know, it's important to get the the project out because the sketch of the day is is nice. But uh, you know, you find you spend a lot of time doing that, and then you know. Inevitably, it's important to tell a story, sure. you know, because you know pinups, too much pinups, too much coverage. You know, it, it, it's it's nice, but you know, in the end, you you, you know, you gotta you gotta put a book out to stay uh, relevant. Mm-hmm. I think. No, no, definitely. You know, a lot of great artists have just become you know cover artists and shit. Mm. Yeah, we don't know any about any of those guys, do we? No, you know what I mean. There's nothing wrong with that. These guys got to make a living, and you know they they get paid well. But what I'm saying is, to me. 
I was spending I spent a lot of time with the with the sketch of the day because it was hard to sit down and focus on a project when I was you know wiping asses and noses around here all the time. Sure. So uh, you know that's why I, I haven't been like you know sitting at the tavern, you know watching Bonanza reruns. <laughs> I've been <laughs> sent on you know, watching fucking Starsky and Hutch and Kojak. You know. Oh my lordy! I'm sorry, guys. That's sorry. okay. Listen, thanks again for having me on. You're more you know, than welcome. I love you anytime. You Absolutely. Guys, you know, somebody, somebody cancels or, you know, somebody owes you money. <laughs> Don't call me. <laughs> oh. Now we'll just call you for some, some uh, passes and uh, yeah, hotel, right. hotel rooms. Passes, money, hotel rooms, you know, uh, free art. Bro. Yeah, free art, oh, shit like that. Free art, absolutely. I'm all over yeah. that. You know, roofies, you know. You need, you know, you need startup money for your meth lab over there in Reading. You know, I'm your guy. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Listen, have a nice. Uh, if I don't talk to you before then, have a good summer. Absolutely. Yeah, you too, Jamie. Take, Jamie. Take care of yourself. I will. Don't be a fucking stranger. Shoot me an email once around. You're, you're like one of those broads that I fucked around with in high school. I never hear from him anymore. What's the matter with you? <laughs> okay, you got it. Uh, no, no, I, I'm serious. I see you, your fucking ants all over Facebook, so don't give me any shit. Don't give know? me shit. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. You All of a sudden, you act like, you know, I, I'm, I see your face on a fucking milk carton. You know, I'm like, where the fuck are you? You know, it's like you're supposed to, we're supposed to be friends, and I, I hear from you like, oh, I don't know, what, three times a year? Hey, I know you got. I know you got shit to do, so I try well, to. Stay. I got. What do I got to do? I got nothing. I have no life. What the <laughs> fuck? You know. <clears throat> Shoot me an email once in a while. All right. I'm like that fucking that, that half a sandwich that fell behind the couch. Where am I going? <laughs> I don't know. All right, Sal. I will see you in a few weeks. Pants. Listen. Don't hit on the stewardesses, please. <laughs> okay, I won't. Out of trouble. Especially if they're all male. You got it. Really got it. <laughs> yeah, no, no fucking reach arounds, please. And don't pick the don't pick the scabs. It's never good. Mm. <laughs> all right, Sal. Take care. Take, take care of yourselves, guys. All right, Sal. All right, man. <laughs> bye, bye. Right. <laughs> oh, is he finally gone? Is he finally now gone? Now we can talk now about we can him. Talk about God him. Almighty, I'm tired of his bullshit. Uh. That, uh, holy cow, two hours and, I don't know, 13 I re- minutes? I really am coming to believe that he doesn't have anybody to talk to. We're like his only release. Hey, you know, that's fine. We actually had a little bit of comic talk in there, oh, but yeah. everything else was, like, therapeutic. It's like, get it. tell me about your childhood, Sal. Yes. <laughs> we'll see you in six months for a checkup. Uh, I think we made some real progress Yes, we, we're making a lot of progress here. We know all I have to do is give him a bacon sandwich. Yes. I hadn't, I hadn't realized the whole thing with. I want to talk to him about this next time I see him. The was the USC Film School. I don't ever remember. Yeah, I don't know that. if I ever knew that before. Oh, uh, you know, cause I remember him talking about college, but I don't. It doesn't click <clears throat> to me that that's what it was. And I'm really looking forward to this new project once he yes. finally gets it done. Go to I believe it's samabenanti dot com. Uh, that's his blog. Mm-hmm. He's got a few images posted from that, uh, including the one of the uh, from the hunger. Mm. Yeah. It might be helpful to spell Abenanti. <laughs> it's a A B B I N A N T I. That's correct. <laughs> I'm sure he preached the proper spellings. Yes. All right. This episode was brought to you by the fine folks at superherostuff.com. I'm glad you remembered. I totally go forgot to who it was. superherostuff.com for all of your superhero stuff. stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Oh, come on, you dirty son of a bitch. Uh I'm sorry, we're listening to Sal for two and a half hours plus. (laughs) You dirty little... Well, never mind. (laughs) If you want to leave us a voicemail telling us how much you love Sal, want us to have him on every day, the number is 267-702-6642. Leave us an email saying how much you love Sal. It's comicgeekspeak at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, talk all about Sal. We're Comic Geek Speak. You can join the conversation at thecomicforums.com. Tell us how much you love Sal and have on every episode of thecomicforums.com. We want to thank everybody who has donated to the show. We really appreciate it. Could not do without you. And as always, always, we are uniting the world's mightiest heroes, one listener at a time. <laughs>